Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today is a mega video. Let's get crafting. For this DIY, we're gonna be using four long skewer sticks, some greenery, some berries, and some twine. Now, this is such a fun farmhouse DIY, but it has a little bit of a modern boho feel to it, and you're gonna see why. So I started by taking my skewer sticks, and I'm gonna cut out two pieces that are the same length, and then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna create one that's a little bit shorter to create the shape of a Christmas tree. Now, these were super popular and trendy around the summertime and the springtime. I saw a whole bunch of people making these and they put florals on them that were more geared to those seasons. But I thought, how cool would it be to do this again, but this time for Christmas? And then you're gonna see at the very end, I've decided to, instead of having them being three separate little decor pieces, I decided to bring them all together to become one Christmas tree. And I felt like it was a fun twist on this whole idea I've seen happening a lot here on YouTube throughout this last few months. So I wanna make sure I'm strengthening those corners because these are just shish kebab sticks and they are gonna pop right apart if we don't. So I cut off a couple little small pegs or nubs <laughs> and then I glued them down into place really well. And we're not even gonna see those parts because we're gonna end up covering them up with some pretty things on them. And now I'm gonna go in with a really beautiful foresty green color. At the top of each of them, I'm gonna put a star that I have on hand from Hobby Lobby. I bought a pack of these with a coupon. And I'm just gonna glue them on at the top to make sure that they're nice and secure and on there so they won't pop off over time. Now this is where I was saying that you can have them being three separate things like we see a lot on Pinterest and here on YouTube or we can bring them all together and create something super cool. So what I wanna do to make sure everything is nice and secure on here is I'm taking a piece of twine, I glue it down first, and now I'm gonna take some greenery. I decided to, instead of doing the Dollar Tree garlands that they have, I wanted to use something that's more modern and up to date. So I'm gonna be using this boxwood that I buy on a really long vine from Hobby Lobby and I just cut that thing apart until I basically have nothing left and then I go and buy a new one. So I went ahead and just put those on, glued them and kept twisting the twine around it and did the same thing with the berries. And then I repeated the same thing on the other side, meeting right up into the middle. This is the best way to put these on. Then to conceal the middle and all the mess that it might be with all the twine, I went ahead and took some of this really pretty ribbon from the Dollar Tree, went around it a few times, and then I'm now gonna add a bow on the largest one. The other two smaller ones, I decided not to add a bow and you'll see it at the end. But if you're deciding to do these as three separates, you could end up doing them the three different ones with the ribbons on it. That could be really cute too. I love how dainty and simple these are. And if you love that modern farmhouse look without it being too complicated, this is a really great DIY to try. So now I'm gonna start bringing them together. So what I did was I laid each of the triangle Christmas tree pieces on top of each other where I liked the spacing. And then I'm coming back in with my twine and I'm just tying them right at their connecting joints. And then I glue that into place. Then to conceal it so you don't see that messiness again, we're gonna come back in with some of that greenery, some of the berries and some of the ribbon. And then after I'm done with doing all of that, we now need to go ahead and move on to create the loop up at the top so we can hang it up. This part's really simple. I just used a little piece of twine, hot glued it all into place, and then once it was dry, it was ready to be hung up and to display it in my home. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambel and this is my DIY channel. I am a third generation crafter. I have been crafting ever since I can remember. My mom is a crafter, my grandmother was a crafter, and also my daughter loves to craft. Even though she's five, she's already so interested. Here on my channel, you will see that I post on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's also gonna go into the new year. I'm so excited about being able to share two new videos each week. If you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up. It would mean so much to me and it really will help out this video here on my channel. This next DIY is so friendly. It is a perfect DIY if you're a new crafter and you wanna try something out. What you're gonna need, one of these foam 
cones from the Dollar Tree. I struggled saying that a little bit. And then whatever ribbon you choose from the Dollar Tree or other places or anything you might have on hand. So this ribbon is from the Dollar Tree. I picked it up during the fall time and the trick to it is you're gonna fold it in half where the wires are coming together and touching and then you're going to start to just snip along that ribbon. And we're gonna be making a wider snip as you're going along and then as we get closer and closer to the top, you're gonna to see that I'm starting to make it a little bit closer together so that there are smaller snips versus wider snips. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hot glue, you're gonna go ahead and put that on your cone and then you're gonna just keep going around and around until you coil all the way up to the top. Now you can see at this point I'm starting to make my snips being a little bit smaller Right around this area, the middle, I like to go a little bit more of a medium and then really small towards the top. Now, this is a part that I learned as I was going along and trying this and kind of coming up with how I wanted to do it. I decided to add some hot glue in between where the wires touch each other just to try to help it keep it from losing its form or its shape. And it just helped it to make it easier to put it back on when I was coiling it around the actual cone. So as you're getting towards the top more and more, you're gonna notice that at the very top, it's not gonna wanna cover all the way up and you want it to be nice and clean. So I took a piece of the ribbon and I cut it into a larger circle. I put some hot glue, I pulled it all around the side so that way when I got up to the top, we can make this look as clean as we possibly can. Then as you get to the top with those really small cut pieces of the ribbon, how you see me fraying it, I went ahead and just twisted in the very end and glued it down into place. This really makes it look polished up at the top and I just love how this turned out. Now this is where it gets even fun. We can stop here and leave this as it is, but I felt like the top needed a little something, plus I wanted to kind of clean it up some. So I found this leftover pick piece from one of the florals that I used for this video and I decided that it would be so cute if I poked that down at the top and then added some wood beads at the top. I don't know what it is about this part but when I did it I ended up Oh, it went from feeling like it was cute to feeling like it was high end, something you would see in a boutique and it just kept getting better and better and you're going to see that I just keep taking it one step better. Now again, you could totally stop here and you could even just do the tree, not the, the wood balls on top. But then I decided, wait a second, let's take it one more step further. So I took one of these wood blocks from the Dollar Tree and a little dowel also from the Dollar Tree. And I just drilled a hole and you can see that I didn't have the right drill bit that I needed for it. So I just kind of wiggled it around until I got it to a size that I would need for the dowel to be able to fit down in there. Added some hot glue added it into the tree at the bottom and I pushed it down, made sure it was secure. And then I also hot glued up in there to make sure everything was nice and secure. With the bow being on top, it's so cute. Now we could stop there or we can go one more step further. And this is the thing about DIYs, they're so fun to customize them, to make them your own and keep playing with them. These little garden tags are from the floral section. I love these things. There's something about them that looks so farmhouse, high-end looking. And then I went ahead and just popped it off the stick, glued it onto the wood block, and now I decided to write the number 25 because I thought that would be so sweet for Christmas. So I went ahead and just took my time with my thin paintbrush and some white paint. And once it was all done, it's ready to be displayed. For this DIY, we are gonna be using three of these nautical ropes and we're gonna turn them into the coolest wreath ever. So we're gonna take the three ropes and fold them right in half and cut them because we are gonna have two lines that have three ropes glued together and we're gonna start weaving them together. Now my best tip is make sure at the very ends you put a little bit of glue and twist them into place so that way they don't come unraveled as you're working with them. So once I had those all in place, I went ahead and laid down my first one on the table and then the second one came over the top. Now I'm gluing the pieces together to make sure that they're gonna hold their form and then the one on the bottom always comes over to the right. So you can see here that I've taken the bottom one and I've swung it over that rope and now I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna swing it over 
and we're going to just continue to do this over and over again swinging it over to your right so as you're going you're going to want to make sure that you're gluing the ropes to make sure they keep their form because we're still working in the form of a circle this is where it does get a little bit tricky so make sure when you're gluing you're making sure that you're curving your rope so that it doesn't go too straight and it doesn't lose the form of the circle and you're just going to keep doing this over and over again until you get to the very end of the rope and it comes all the way together as a circle so here i am i'm, I'm making my curve i'm making my turn and this is what it looks like when i've gone all the way around now you're going to take the ends and make sure they're all nice and straight and even glue those together those two ends where we started and where we ended and then bring that last one over and then tuck it under and then glue that all into place once it's all glued into place go ahead and flip it over and you're going to pick a fabric of your choice now i'm going to be going with green because i thought this was really pretty and i had this green ribbon on hand and here comes Comet. He's up on my table and he wanted my attention. I kept telling him to go away and he kept meowing at me and then eventually he just hopped up on the table. So you can see that I took those pieces of fabric and I put them underneath the opening so it would show that color. And then I glued it down to a piece of foam core board and now I'm going to exacto knife and cut it out with my scissors. I just kind of went back and forth between the two of them and all the tricky places. Be careful not to cut your rope because this rope will want to fray and come apart. So just take your time on this part and get it nice and clean where you don't see the foam core coming out on the side. When you flip it over, this is what it should look like. It almost reminded me of those baby teething rings. <laughs> I thought it was so funny because it was, it was exactly that shape. Then you're gonna flip it back over and you're gonna start adding in some greenery. I love, love this frosted fern from the Dollar Tree. Anytime I find it when I go, I always pick some more up because I just think it's so pretty. So I added that with some greenery and now I'm taking three bells that I had from Target that I bought last year and I'm just gonna put some twine on them. I did a little slip knot at the very bottom so that way I can make sure that it looks really pretty at the end. And then I went ahead and took all three of those, made them at different lengths, ran them through the loop of the rope, and then I added a bow. I am over on Instagram if you didn't know and I love sharing my content over there as well. I am always sharing sneak peeks of things I'm working on and I'm also sharing what's just going on with my family. So if you're interested, come on by to Instagram and say hi to me and let's become friends over there as well. Here on my channel, I love to give some really easy projects to try if you're a new crafter and some that are a little more advanced. So today we're gonna be doing this really cute votive holder. We're gonna take this box. It normally has a little box that you would slide it into, but this was left over from a craft and so I wanted to use this. You can get this in there crafter's corner at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and use this crocodile tool that I love so much be able to punch a couple holes out I'm gonna link this tool down below people ask me about it all the time it punches through wood and metal and it does not hurt your hand if you have any arthritis issues because it's got a spring system in it once I had my holes punched out and I painted the box white and you can paint it whatever color you want but I went with white because I'm doing red and white this Christmas season for my home I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this green wire from the Dollar Tree that I found, and I'm just gonna take a little piece of this wire long enough to be able to create a handle and to pull it up on the sides and twist it around into place. Once I have that on, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a nice long piece of ribbon to attach a bow to the side. Now this could be so cute, making several of these and putting them on a table down the center of a table for a party. I just love how this turned out and this was so cost efficient. Now to really make it look special, to top it off, I'm gonna get one of the Dollar Tree little voted lights that they have that are battery operated and put that right down inside.
These are the supplies we're going to be using today. Two packs of these tongue depressor sticks, one pack of the regular popsicle sticks, a ribbon that's out of the Dollar Tree, this shovel, and then one of these foam squares. So we're going to go ahead by taking off the shovel from the dowel and we're going to just get off that sticker. I like to sand it whenever I have a problem with it drill a hole and then add in a smaller dowel. This is going to create that crossbar that you see on a cute lantern out in front of someone's house. We're going to be making this cute smaller lantern that you can decorate and have in your home for the Christmas season. So once you've got your hole pressed into your foam block, you're going to go ahead and take some these thick tongue depressor sticks and I'm going to cut them down to a size that I like. I want to have a little bit overlap at the top of it so that it can create a greenery box down inside where you don't see the foam square and it just hides it all and looks really pretty at the end with the finishing look. But we're going to need to cut six of these sticks for each side. Now the trick about the six is that the sixth one is going to be hanging over just a little bit so I'm going to cut that down the middle of it and you're going to see me doing that here where I can lay down the five they fit perfectly but that sixth one needs to be cut down to size a little bit to be able to fit so it's not having a really heavy overlap on it. Then trim around the top to make sure everything's nice and straight and even. Add in some extra glue around the inside so you can make sure it's all nice and secured on there. And then you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. You're going to just add some more of the sticks down across the bottom and trim off that sixth one. Now we can leave it there, but I decided to make this look really high end. That's the goal with this project. I decided to take some of the popsicle sticks, cut off the rounded pieces, and then added them around the top and the bottom and the sides to create a really pretty casing around it. There's something about this that made this go from just being a craft project to looking more high end. And I just love the finished look of having the sticks around the sides like this. And I just used a pencil to mark anywhere I needed to and then cut off and then put everything into place. This was a really easy project to do and I just had some music on while I was working on this and it went by pretty quick. Now we're going to add some hot glue and some E6000 down into our foam square to make sure the dowel is really in there nice and strong. And then I really wanted to make sure that it dried so I added some more hot glue around the top to make sure that it just encased it all in there so it would have time to really set and do a good job holding everything into place so over time it doesn't fall out. Now we're going to move on to the lantern that's going to go on top of the dowel. So I'm going to take five of these popsicle sticks and you can do them whatever length that you want but my goal was to try to make it a five by five square. So I'm going to take the five and then I'm going to lay on another five and then I'm going to cut off any extra to make it a perfect square so that it has a nice lantern squared look to it. Once I had the popsicle sticks glued one way and glued the other way, I then trimmed down another popsicle stick to be able to create a framed box going around the sides. Once I had three of the sides glued on, I stopped at the fourth one because you're going to want to be able to staple that onto your dowel. I put a lot of hot glue on it and then went in with my staple gun and I just stapled down twice. If you're interested in this staple gun, I'll link that down below. I always love to use this in my craft room. If you're new here, you'll see that in other videos, I use it all the time too. So once I had it all stapled on there nice and strong and it wasn't going anywhere, I added on that fourth little wall. Now what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take the popsicle sticks or the tongue depressor sticks, as long as you can get them, I just cut off right at the top rounded area so that they're nice and long because this is gonna create the walls of our lantern. I'm putting two in each corner, just as you're seeing here, so you're gonna need eight of these. And then once you've got those, you're gonna take a, another box. Now see, I created two of these, one for the base that I stapled into the dowel and then one that I created for the top. It's the exact same steps except for this one, you don't staple it. So you could just go ahead and add that fourth wall. And then you're gonna add some hot glue around the sides where the corners meet up. And you're gonna simply slip that right on. Once you've got that on, go ahead and take some popsicle sticks. And I'm gonna put the first one crossed 
the back side of it going from corner to corner because they do have a hard time kind of laying on top of each other and you want this to lay nice and flat. So the first one is under and the second one is over. And you can see here that I put it on three of the sides, but I left the back one open so that you can add in your lights or whatever you want to light it up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four sticks and we're going to add a whole bunch going up the top because I decided I felt like the top of the lantern still looked a little flat and I wanted it to have some more personality. So we're gonna create almost like a little pyramid at the top. And I just cut those down to where they were about two inches wide. And you can see here that on the very last two, I'm gonna go from corner to corner and I'm gonna cut off the extra. Now remember this is four sticks across. So on the first and the fourth one, you're gonna cut off the corners. And then once you've got that done, you can repeat that four more times because this is going to create that little pyramid at the very top of your lantern and it's going to make it look like it's a real actual lantern, not that you built this out of popsicle sticks and tongue depressor sticks. So once you've got four of them done, I went ahead and glued the sides, added some glue to the back to reinforce it, and then I just kept going around until I got the whole thing built. And all glued together and once you felt that it was nice and strong and dry and secure you then can go ahead and add some more glue around it and then add that to the very top of your lantern make sure it's as centered as possible before you actually make the commitment to gluing it all the way down because that would just be a tragedy if you glued it on a little crooked so I put mine on and then stood it up and make sure that it was nice and straight now at the very top we're gonna need to seal off the top of it so I'm gonna just take some more of those sticks and I'm gonna cut them down to size and I'm just gonna simply put them right here up at the top. Now, two fit nicely, but there was still a little bit of a gap between it. So I went ahead and cut one down really thin to make sure that it was nice and perfect and fit and sealed the whole top part of my little lantern. Once you have those pieces all on and everything is nice and dry, nice and sturdy, you're then gonna move on to something that's really cool. I'm gonna take this shower hook ring, and you could stop here, you don't have to do this part, but I thought this was so cool to really finish the look. I took this shower curtain ring, and I'm gonna just drill some holes that are big enough to be able to slip the shower ring into it. Now you're gonna notice that I had a little ball on top there, and that is totally cute too, but I ended up taking it off later because I liked the way that the hook looked more. And to get the drill, I just took my drill and kept moving it around until I made a drill big enough. I just really need to get a bigger drill bit, honestly. Then I took it outside and I gave it a really pretty, almost like an oatmeal color, kind of like a tannish color, spray paint job all over the whole thing. And I'm gonna go in with some brown paint and just kinda touch the little corners to make it look like it's been weathered sitting outside because I just think this is so pretty. Again, you can skip this step if this is not for you and you don't like distressing, but I do always like a little bit of, you know, distressing to my things. Now I'm gonna take these really cute berries that they come out with at Christmas time at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna add these into the bottom of my box to really just make this come to life. I feel like at this point it is just so pretty. It's one of the reasons why I went more neutral with the paint color. If you want to add more white flowers, I would recommend maybe painting your lantern red. That could be really cute. And then I added in some pine cones just to really make it look so pretty for Christmas. Now I'm gonna take that ribbon that they had at the Dollar Tree in the fall time, and I'm gonna just simply tie it around the back, make sure it's all on there nice and secure, so that way it stays on long term. I always like to make my bows, if you're interested in my bow video, I'll link it down below, but I always like to make my bows first and then I have a piece of twine that I always use to wrap around it so it looks more store made. I touched up my red berries as you saw me doing there and then I'm gonna use some of these twinkle lights that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some garland to just disguise the box because we don't want to see that and then once it's all wrapped around nice and tight you can turn it on and put it inside your lantern and display for Christmas. This is a proud mom alert. 
my boys have started their very own YouTube channel. It is called Sambal Brick. The two of them together are going to be posting on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I could not be more proud of them. They have so many fun things planned for this channel. If you have someone in your life that loves Legos, it would mean so much to me if you shared it with them and head on over and just check it out to help support their channel to get it started. They are so grateful for every single person who clicks the subscribe button or watches one of their videos. This project is another easy project to try out if you're a new crafter or if you just like making ornaments. So I'm gonna take this wooden star that they have at the crafter's corner or the crafter's square, I think it's one of those two, at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna just patch the original hole because we're actually going to do a different hole direction. This actually doesn't lend well to hanging up on a Christmas tree. It's better to run your hole this way, but you could technically just keep the original hole that they had. I just wanted to switch it because I guess I'm just a spaz. <laughs> I don't know. So I've decided to just take my drill and quickly drill a little hole on the other side. You can see on the side of the star. Once I had that drilled, I went ahead and painted my star red. Now you can paint your star whatever color you would like, but I'm doing red and white for Christmas, so I went with a red star so I can put this on my tree. Now this cool little paintbrush I picked up recently from Joann's, and I'll show you the package for it in just a second, but there's four of them in a pack. They have two different sizes in the pack, so they have two of the larger, two of the smaller. And I love it because you can tap on dots. I love polka dots. I don't know about all of you, but I love a good polka dot and a good stripe. So I am just going to make a really cute, simple polka dot pattern on this red, and it just pops, and it is so farmhouse cute. I love this ornament so much and it was so easy to make. So once I went over all of my dots a couple times, I really wanted to make sure the white was really strong and it stood out. These are the little brush tags that I picked up, so you can go ahead and pick those up. But once that paint was dry, I went ahead and just sanded the sides just a little bit. I wanted it to be, you know, a farmhouse look. Y'all know I love that style here in my channel. And I'm just, you don't have to sand it, but that's what Heidi did. So I'm just sanding it just ever so slightly on the sides. And then after I'm all done, I'm gonna take that original twine that I untied. I slipped it back through my hole that I drilled and I'm just gonna tie my knot. And you're gonna see here at the end how just changing the direction of that hole is going to allow it to hang beautifully on a tree when you go to hang it up. For this craft, we're going to be using a large ornament, birds, some greenery, a foam square, and some Spanish moss. Now, we are picking up all these supplies from the Dollar Tree, so what we're going to do to get started is we're going to take that foam square and with a craft knife, we're going to cut off the edges of this block. Then once you've got them cut off, go ahead and take it and press it down on the table, flattening out those sides so it's a nice rounded piece. This is going to be the base for what we're going to be building. Now we're going to take the ornament, pop off that metal top, and we're going to make an impression down into that foam because this is going to become the base of it. And after I started putting this in here and I glued it all in, I wish I had added a couple eggs in there. <laughs> I thought that would have been so cute, but it was kind of too late because I had already put it all down. I had the idea afterwards, but this is supposed to look like a little nest inside of this little ball. And now we're going to add in some of the E6000 to make sure that stays on there and some hot glue. And if you missed it earlier, I actually glued that moss down into place and I was using a hook to pull it down so it would bond to the glue. Now what we're going to do once we got the ball onto the foam piece, I'm using my hot glue gun. I learned this last year. A couple of you gave me this really great idea. They said, hey, you could use the tip of your hot glue gun to create a hole in any plastic ornament. So that's what I'm doing. I made about five holes with my hot glue gun tip. 
it didn't ruin my glue gun at all and now I'm gonna go ahead and take a few leaves off of one of my florals that I had that I showed at the beginning and I'm going to pop off the back part and keep part of that plastic on to push down into that hole to glue it on there because hot glue is one of those things that over time it'll peel off it really needs something to be able to bond it together this is the reason why we made the holes so once you've got a couple of leaves on there using some of those little plastic pieces that are originally on the leaf on the actual stem now we're going to move on to our bird so i'm going to take a piece of wire and I popped out his legs because I didn't want that. And his body's actually hollow. These birds from the Dollar Tree are hollow. So I went ahead and just looped that wire around in there. And now I'm looping it through the holes that we made earlier with our hot glue gun. And I'm going to just twist him on into place. This is going to keep this bird on here without it falling off and having any issues at all, which is going to be so great. And now we're going to add all kinds of cute little things. So I'm going to add this little twig that I accidentally randomly found inside of my Spanish moss bag. It came out when I was getting out the moss. I thought, hey, that's perfect. I'll just put that on there to make it look like it's sitting on a little branch. And now I'm going to add in some moss around the base of the bird and just make it look like it's sitting up in a tree looking over its nest. I just thought this was so fun. Now at this point we're going to go down and we're going to start working on that foam piece and we're going to start adding in some greenery picks and some Christmas tree twist ties that I have from the Dollar Tree that I just cut them apart. Once you've got that base around the ball covered, you're then going to go to the bottom of our foam and we're going to add a couple pieces at the bottom and we're going to wrap one around and we're just going to glue everything all into place so it has a really nice finished look on the bottom. See how I'm gluing and I'm pulling it over and making sure everything's nice and tight and all finished and the base of it looks nice and complete. I always really like to go for that store finished look. Then I added some more greenery around where the foam was still showing right above the ribbon and now I'm going to take one of these garden tags that they have over in their floral section and I'm going to write the word joy or paint better yet <laughs> I'm going to paint the word joy on here I thought this would be really pretty to put on the front of the ribbon add some hot glue and now I'm just going to put that right on the front center and this being up on a little pedestal would just be so cute for decor Now this is not my only channel here on YouTube. I have another channel that is called Heidi Sample Home and over there you are going to find a lot of decorating inspiration and cleaning motivation. I love and cherish that channel just because it's a really fun place to go and visit and be motivated throughout the holiday seasons and just a fun place to get to know me and my family a little bit better. For this DIY, we are gonna be actually only using three of these long signs from the Dollar Tree and one of these cute holiday signs that you can also pick up at the Dollar Tree. Now, I actually stopped in the process of doing this video to run out and finally break down and buy a heat gun. So many of you have been saying, Heidi, just get a heat gun, these stickers will come right off. Friends, why didn't I listen to you sooner? <laughs> this sticker came off so easy. And the best part was is that once it came off, I was able to just tap it a couple times and the extra glue that was on the sign came off so easy. I wish I had listened to you all earlier. Thank you for everyone who's been saying, Heidi, just get a heat gun. <laughs> Now these signs are about 18 inches long, so I'm gonna just cut that in half and I'm gonna find that exact half point and I'm gonna use a 45 degree angle cut standing it up on its side. So it's not flat, but it's up on its side. If that makes sense? And you can see here that I've got these two pieces that are the same size and now I'm gonna figure out the base. So I'm gonna take this and just mark it off and I don't have the exact measurement for this but it just depends on how wide you want to make this because today friends we are making a really sweet nativity scene now uh, for the rooftop we're going to use one more of these so this is why I was saying we need three of them and we're going to just create a cut line for where they're going to miter together at the top so we're going to need a 45 degree angle for that 
and then we need it just to be flat on the ends, not an angled cut. So you can see I have the two green ones that are a little bit shorter for the roof, the black ones are a little bit longer for the walls, and then the blue one is for the base. Now I laid it all out, tried to hold them all in place so I can trace around the sign because we're gonna cut that down so this could be the back of it and make it really sturdy. Now I love this because if you score these boards, these signs, if you score them a couple times they pop right off where you want them to be cut and then you just go over it with a pair of old scissors and you cut off the rest so you have a nice clean line. So you can see here that I'm just going over this side, I scored it, I pulled it back and then it just pops right off and then you can use your scissors to just clean up the line if there's anything extra that needs to be cleaned up. Now we can start assembling our darling nativity. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down the walls first. I'm making sure that they come all the way down to the bottom and I'm gonna just take my staple gun and staple that in place. And all of my tools, if you're interested in any of my tools, I'm gonna have them linked down below so you can check them all out. So I'm just gonna do a couple staples just to get it started to hold them in place. And I'm gonna come back and really reinforce the back. I love whenever the projects are really well built versus you drop it and it's gonna break. So now at the top, I went ahead and mitered the corners together with some wood glue and some hot glue. And now I'm coming in and quickly adding on the glue to the sides of the walls and also to the back side of the roof. And I'm just gluing that all down into place to making sure everything's nice and secure. And then I'm coming back in with my staple gun and just going crazy on it. Now, here's this next part. Obviously, I'm not going into my desk. <laughs> I'm doing a countersink hole. I'm just going around enough to make sure that the screw head will be able to sink down in there because you don't want that to scratch your table. And once I had that done, I went ahead and added some glue to the bottom of the walls, lined up those countersink holes, and then I took my drill and drilled all the way through it so that way when I go to put a screw in, it'll go in really easy. So once I've pre-drilled that hole, I switched out my bit and I went ahead and added in the screw and drilled it all into place. This is going to be that final thing that is going to make this thing, you could drop it a million times. Well, I wouldn't drop it off of like a big building. <laughs> then it would probably break. But you could drop this a bunch and not have to worry about it breaking or having any issues because everything has been stapled together and screwed down at the bottom. It's built really well if you follow these steps. Now I'm gonna take some white paint. I think I went over with about four coats of white paint. I really wanted to make sure the white was really beautiful and just glowing. Now I'm gonna take some of these peg people. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but this is like a real trendy thing to do over on Pinterest. And I love these little peg people. I've loved them for years. I thought it would be so sweet to make a Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus out of these peg people. So first I started by painting on their faces, and then I went in with the color for their clothes. So Mary, I went with a really pretty blue color, a very light, teal almost like an ocean blue and then while i was letting that dry over to the side and a heat gun works so great for that too i'm so glad i went and finally bought a heat gun you're going to see me using it a lot in this video now i'm going to use some brown and i'm going to put on joseph's beard and i'm just kind of tapping it around and making a hairline and while that's drying i switch to black and i'm now going to put on mary's hair and i kind of made a little swoop in the front <laughs> <laughs> so you could tell that she, you know, is marrying his pretty hair. And now I'm taking a fine tip brush and I'm going to make some scallops all the way down her. And I'm going to come back in with this lighter blue color so that you can really see the difference between the two blues. This is going to be her pretty veil that she has on her or her shawl. I don't know exactly. I think it's like a veil, maybe a shawl. Leave a comment down below educate me <laughs> if I'm saying it wrong. I'm not offended if you if you help your friend Heidi out. And then for baby Jesus, I went ahead and used the same color that I used on her shawl, on her covering. I, I don't know. Now we're going to go over to Joseph and I went ahead and added green to a really, a really pretty green. I really love this color. And I went all the way up to his neckline, just twisting around and the fun thing about these is you really could just make them look however you want them to look. You can customize them, you can change their hair color. It's so fun 
doing this project. I really, really enjoyed making these and I just think they're so sweet. Wait until you see them all together with Nativity and it, it's so fun how this project turned out. Now for Mary, I wanted to add a little bit more detail so I took the back of my brush and I'm just making tiny little dots all over to give her some design and to, you know, just make her look more feminine. And then on the bottom of Joseph, I went around with some white paint creating some little dots all the way around him. Now when they were drying, I went ahead and switched back over to the house because the white paint was done drying. And I'm just gonna take some ticking cloth and I'm going to just go ahead and add that to the back of the house to clean it up because that's where the glittery sign was on the back side. Now we're gonna take a wooden star I have a pack of these that I got from, I think it was Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon or they might have been on sale. And I'm just going to paint that yellow and I'm going to put that right up at the top of the house and it's going to clean up that line where we mitered those pieces together and it looks really finished and polished at this point. We're going to be taking this sign that I picked up during the summertime and you can use any size that you want, but I really thought this size was perfect. So at the third mark, we're going to measure it into thirds. I'm going to draw a line and then I'm going to go down a line of the middle of that box we just drew. And then I'm going to go a third inside that third box. So you can see here, I'm creating lines to be able to make an angle because we're going to turn this into a barn. So I'm just meeting up my lines into the center point and then I'm going to take a craft knife and I'm going to just score that board and believe it or not these break so perfectly right on the line if you score them about two or three times and then just snap it and anything extra that comes off you're going to take your scissors and just trim it and you're going to go all the way around those four corners that we just created so it creates a barn roof. This is just such an easy and cute DIY and you can see here that the angles look just like the top of a barn and you're not going to touch the bottom part here, you're going to leave that alone. Now, I have heard from people that you can wet, wet the back of these and they should be able to peel off but I wanted to show you all that I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> I was having the hardest time trying to peel this off and I felt like it was super messy so what I like to do is I like to either put a piece of foam core on the back side or to make this look more high end you can put a piece of fabric on the back of it and glue that into place and I just went with a really pretty cream and blue ticking stripe. I thought this would look really nice. Once that's all glued on the back, go ahead and flip it over and give it a coat of barn red. I went ahead and went with almost like a cherry red because I thought this would just be so bright and pretty for Christmas. Once I had the whole thing painted all the way over with one coat of paint, I went ahead and moved on creating the roof. Now the roof can be a little bit trickier, but really all you're doing is just following the cut lines of the roof. So first I'm going to cut it at an angle. I'm going to place it on there and then I'm going to stick another one underneath it to be able to create that mitered corner that we want at the top. And you're just going to take your time on this part, making your cut lines with your pencil marks. And then once you've got those, you're going to trim off the sides. Now I laid them down and I also drew a little pencil line to know where to cut. Now you can see at this point I've got the top of my roof and then I'm going to come around to the side and I'm going to also create the exact same steps. I'm going to sneak a stick underneath there, draw my little pencil line once I've got it in place and then cut off the extra that I don't want where I drew my line. So that way all of the corners are gonna match up perfectly. Then once you've got everything all cut, you can go ahead and take your hot glue and glue everything down into place. Now this is the fun part about this. You could put this roof on however you want. This is just particularly how I did it, but there's so many fun things you can do with this roof and you can go with a brown or a white. I decided to go ahead and paint mine white and you'll see that in a second. But first we're gonna go down to the middle of the board. I decided to do a line across it just like you would see on a barn. And now we're gonna create the doors. So I have the three sticks that are just basically the length of a popsicle stick and I cut off the rounded pieces. And then I put one down the middle 
And then I'm creating, again, those little corner mark-offs where I know I need to be able to make things fit down inside the corners. And then I did one, and then I took another, and I made this one so it would be cut in half, so everything laid flat on my sign. I thought this would just be so high-end looking by taking the time to cut these down. And then I just kept playing with it. Popsicle sticks are so affordable so that if you make a mistake, you can just try it again until you get it right. And then once I got one side done, I actually kind of got the groove of it and I was going even faster on the second side. So this is definitely something that once you try it once, you'll learn it really easy and then be able to move forward really quickly. Once I had my door all on, I went ahead and took some of this garland and I'm gonna just sneak it out because unraveling this whole thing is a beast. <laughs> it makes a big mess. And then I'm gonna give it a haircut. I love to trim this down because it goes from looking kind of chintzy to looking high end. So <laughs> this is a garland from the Dollar Tree. It turns into just such a darling small wreath. And then I'm gonna add that to the top of my barn in just a second. But here's where I'm going back in with the white paint and I'm just gonna paint it all white. And then I'm gonna come in with my wreath and I'm gonna glue that up at the top to add that Christmas touch to it. I thought this was so cute for that farmhouse Christmas decor. And then this ornament is such a hot ticket. They bring it back yearly at the Dollar Tree because it's so stinking cute. So I'm gonna take off the Merry Christmas sign at the bottom. I'm gonna add some E6000 and some hot glue and then just stick that right underneath the wreath. I thought this was so adorable. I don't know what it is about this little Christmas ornament sign that, I don't know, I just thought it was so cute. And then to add that farmhouse touch, I'm gonna add a gingham ribbon, black and white, up at the top, glue it in place to cover those holes, and then you're ready to display it somewhere cute in your home for Christmas. If you are enjoying this mega video, don't forget to check out the playlist that I'm gonna have linked below. And at the end of this video, it's packed full of fun ideas for all sorts of holidays. And if you missed it, there is also one for Christmas that has 35 more DIYs that you might be interested in. For these DIYs, there are two for the price of one. I don't know how else to say that, but basically they're, they're a set and they are two different DIYs and I'm gonna have two different instructions for them. So what we're gonna do is, you saw all the supplies, we're gonna take these clear ornaments from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna use a peach color and we're gonna paint the whole ball, both of them with it. And this is where they're gonna start to change. So on one of them, we're gonna make a pink line, just like this, I'm just using my finger. You could use a brush if you don't wanna get your finger dirty. And then on the other one, we're gonna make two pink circles. Now, one is gonna be Mrs. Claus and then the other one is gonna be Santa Claus. These are so cute. I saw these as an inspiration. I saw someone selling them online and they were super expensive. A store was selling them and I thought, oh, we can make these for like a dollar, a dollar fifty instead of paying like 15 to 20 dollars for each one, which is just no way. Friends, we're crafty. We can make these, right? So you saw there I put on two little dots for the eyes and then the nose is kind of like a burnt orange color and then we're going to take a really fine tip art pen and we're going to just draw on a little smile and I made sure I did those little um, rounded cheeky corners of the smile because it really makes the cheeks really pop and accentuate even more thought this looks so cute and then we're going to take some puffy paint now I will say you could always use instead of puffy paint you could just use regular paint but I wanted it to have a popped up very textured look to it so I went ahead and put on the puffy paint just know that the second that you put this on here it's going to need to dry overnight and it's going to take quite some time if you try to heat this up with your heat gun it will start to melt the ornament, which will be such a bummer because you've already worked so hard on them. So just make sure that when you do use the puffy paint for the beard and her hair, that you just know that you have the commitment of letting it sit out overnight. And be careful when you put too much hair on her because it can want to run if it gets too thick. 
So once that was all dry and it was the next morning, I went ahead and took one of these wire stems that comes from the picks of the Dollar Tree. I cut it down to size that I needed and then I bent it just like this right in the center and now I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to start to curl out the sides to create mini glasses for Mrs. Claus. This is such a cute detail on these ornaments and once you get them to twist into a little pair of glasses you're then going to go ahead and add them on with a, I put a little bit of E6000 right in the middle and then I'm going around the sides with some hot glue and we're going to secure them down even better you'll see in a little bit where I'm going to add in even more glue but I put down the right amount that I needed to get it to just settle on there and stay. How cute is it? I'm putting on her glasses. I don't know what it is about it, but this little ornament actually reminds me of my mom. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's just the little glasses because my mom's the cutest little lady crafter. Now I'm taking my hot glue and I'm just going to build up those corners just a little bit because one side is going to have some glitter to look like frost. And then the other side is going to have some greenery and berries on it, so it's going to really hold it down nice and secure on her face. Now we're going to move on to her little hat or her little bonnet. And I took some felt, I rolled it over just like this, and I'm gluing it all down so it stays in place. And then once I've got that piece, we're going to move on to the red. Now you can honestly use whatever fabric you want. This is what I had on hand, and I decided to go with this buffalo check or gingham. And I first laid it over, found where I needed the hole to be, and then you can see here that I cut out a hole, and now I'm gluing it all along her hairline, wrapping around the back of her head, and I just keep pulling it and cutting away whatever I don't need to create that nice circled look so it looks like it's on top of her head. So just keep playing with it. This part's really simple. It looks a little complicated, but this part is honestly really simple. You just keep pulling it and playing with it until you get it all settled. Then, to clean up all of those edges and to make it look really polished, we're then gonna take that felt that we rolled up earlier, and we're gonna just go all along the edge. Now, I did kind of a zigzag motion with my hot glue to make sure that I was really getting it all locked into place so it doesn't come off and it looks nice and finished. Now you can see here that I have this gap. I did that on purpose because I didn't want it to be too bulky on this part of the ornament because if you go too bulky in ornaments, it can tip to the side more on the ornament and making it look crooked. Now I wanted to add in a little bit more of, you know, Mrs. Claus look to it. So I added in some of this lace from the Dollar Tree and then I'm just pulling it down over the white part to make it look a little more feminine, a little more girly like her. And then over on that spot where I said earlier where I was leaving it open, I'm going to take one of these greenery leaves from the Dollar Tree and I'm just kind of working with it so it's nice and flat instead of it being all opened up with three. And then I'm going to take some of these berries. I thought it would be so cute to take some berries and add some of those on with it as well as a bow. So I put down the bow first, got it all in place. And then I'm going to come back in with the berries and I'm just going to slowly keep bringing them around it until I get it to the look that I want it to look like. And this part is so fun because you really do just get to play with it until you get it as girly as you want her to look. And then I'm going to come in with some hot glue and some Mod Podge two different ways. So first for her cheeks we're going to rub on the Mod Podge just like this. And then I'm going to lightly put on that glitter because we want it to be more smooth. But then on the other parts where we want it to look more frosted, we're going to add on some hot glue and that's going to make it build up and cake up, making it look really icy and frosty. So I went around her glasses and her hat to really add in that cute detail and then go ahead and pop back in her top. And then again, to clean up the top area, I'm going to add some more hot glue and some more glitter and I'm just going to keep playing with it until I get it to the desired look that I want. Once she was all done, I moved her over to the side and moved back over to Santa. And I noticed that after I was done using the puffy paints, I got the desired texture I wanted, but I felt like it was still a little too opaque. So I came on with some white paint and I'm simply just going over it. And then I decided to bring around some more white paint around the bottom side of the ornament to make it look like, you know, all of his beard coming up around the side. And I just like the way that it looked more than leaving it tan back there because then it just looks like, you know, I don't know, like incomplete on the backside. 
Then you don't want it to be too wet. I made sure it was just very damp. I was waiting for it to dry for a few minutes and then I came back in with a little bit of this dusty glitter and I'm just sprinkling that all over the white paint to give it some more texture and depth and I just think it looks so cute. It looks like his beard's all frosty. Now Santa's hat is a little bit different. For Mrs. Claus we used more of a square shape but Santa's gonna be more of a rectangle. You want to make sure that it's going to fit all the way around the width of the ball. So I started up here at the top where his eyes are and I'm just going to bring it down and around the sides because we're going to make Santa's hat where it, you know, kind of flops over to the side. We want to make that same look. This is where the details really start to matter. Now this, this DIY is definitely more advanced for a more advanced crafter, but anybody honestly could try this. And it's so fun. This is the reason why I like to show some that are really easy, some that are medium, and some that are more challenging because I want everybody to have a different opportunity, whatever skill level you are with your crafts, to be able to try it. So once I came all the way around the hat and I glued it up the back to create that back seam, I then brought it up to the top like you saw, brought it over to the side, and then right where the hole is, I pushed it all down around to create that hole. So that way you can still see the hat coming around the back side of the ornament top and we're able to still see his hat really cute. So now I'm gonna come back in with that felt and I'm gonna just zigzag along with my glue, cleaning up that line and making sure it looks really good and then tucking those ends underneath where his hat comes together. At this point, I really wanted the felt to come together because I wanted this part to look nice and full here and it wasn't too bulky. So now at the end of his hat, we are gonna just put on a leaf and then we're gonna come back in with a couple of these berries again and we're gonna just play with it until we like how it looks. This part is so fun. I loved dressing these two little ornaments up so much and adding the berries and making them look like a cute little couple for Christmas. And then at the top, to make sure the ornament stays forward, I did my twine trick where I fold the twine in half, go through the hole, take that opening and then just loop it through so it's a nice little loop knot. I never just tie it because it'll keep it from it wanting to rotate and turn. And I've shown that a lot here on my channel so if you go back and watch other past videos I show it in more depth. So here I am at the very end adding some glitter at the top of him and around his hat and on the berries and it just looks so perfect for Christmas. He looks so frosty and ready to be displayed on your Christmas tree. For this DIY, we're going to be using one of these 3D wreath forms, a piece of foam, two of the snowmans from the Dollar Tree, as well as two picks and some fabric. Now I'm going to be using this red and white gingham fabric and some white felt. Now we're going to start by just popping off one of the hats on one of the snowmen. And then I kind of switched gears for like two seconds because I realized, oh, hold on a second, I need to make my base for everything to be going into. And I took apart that 3D wreath form and I'm only going to be using one of the largest wreath forms. So I'm now going to take that piece of foam, you saw me cutting it apart with my scissors, and we need something to be able to put everything on, otherwise it's just going to get loose and weak and fall apart. So what I like to do is I like to cut a piece of foam, and you can use your scissors or a craft knife or even a kitchen knife of whatever you have on hand, and then I just pressed that wire down into the foam and glued it into place. Now we're gonna go back over to the snowman, or shall I say snow woman, because we're gonna be making a girl snowman, or snow woman. I just did it again, that's so funny. Anyway, we're gonna just take some of that fabric. I took some of the white felt, rolled it up, put it right at the edge, glued it on to the top of the head, and then I'm gonna just get another piece of this felt and push it down in there, so that way it stays nice and fluffy and it doesn't lose its shape. And then I'm gonna bring it together with a piece of twine, cut off the top, and you have made yourself the cutest little snow girl. So now we are gonna take some of these dowels and we're gonna cut them down to the size that you'll need of your foam and the back of the snowman's heads. And we're gonna just push that down in there because we wanna 
make sure that these don't pop off if you have windy weather where we live we have a lot of windy weather at this time of year and you're going to just put some hot glue down in there and this is going to allow them to become nice and fastened onto this foam piece that we put on earlier so go ahead and just pop that right in there i don't know why i enjoyed this part so much but it felt really fun it's kind of like when you're building ikea furniture and they have those little wood nubs that you have to put in between to bring together a dresser <laughs> leave a comment down below if you've ever built ikea furniture they usually have a lot of those i think the craziest one that i ever had was when we were building our island for our kitchen there felt like there were a thousand of those things and I actually really enjoy doing that part. So once you have your two snow people on, I'm going to add some hot glue right in between them to make sure, again, that bonds it and holds it and he just helps it stay together. Now we're going to take two of the picks from the Dollar Tree. We're going to break them all apart and keep putting them into that foam, just making sure we cover all of that green color because we want to make it look like it's a whole bunch of pretty greenery on there not the foam and just keep playing with it until you get the look that you like now i really wanted there to be a pine cone between the two of them but i didn't like that it was pushing it so high up so i took my pliers and i'm just gonna cut away any of that pine cone that's not allowing it to lay flat once you had everything all in place go ahead and make yourself a bow i have a bow video i'll link it down below i don't make bows traditionally how most people do it i actually like doing it the way that a lot of stores do it and now i'm going to take the end of my bow tails and i'm going to hide the last of that foam so nobody will see it on your front door when they come up to knock on your door so i'm going to just go ahead and put some hot glue tap it all into place and then to finish the look i thought it would be really cute to take this cotton stem and go ahead and just place that right in between them on the bow. For this ornament, we're going to be using the large plastic ball from the Dollar Tree. We're going to snip off that little tag and then we are going to go ahead and add some paint on the inside of the ornament. Make sure you shake it around and get all the sides covered. I have realized after doing this several times, it's better to put in a nice amount of paint so that it can shift and move around and then just tap out. I don't like wasting paint, but it's just honestly the best way to do this because otherwise you'll be shaking it forever trying to get the paint to cover up all the little spots. And then make sure you turn it upside down and get out the rest of that paint by letting it sit there and tapping it and sit there and tapping it. One once it's dry, go ahead and I picked up this little round brush from Joann's. I love this little thing. I will be using it a lot more here in my craft room. I will put a link down below in my description box to see if I can try to find it so that you can all go and check it out if you're interested in it. So how it works to get a good polka dot pattern is you do one in the center and then you do six polka dots spaced out around the sides and then you just move down and create the next center and then you're going to end up finishing doing the six polka dots around the side and then you just continue to do this pattern over and over again and you can see how there's the center and then here are the six dots going around it now once that was all dry i went ahead and added on some twine and then i'm adding on a bow at the very top to conceal the knot cut off the extra and hung it up to display For this DIY, we're going to be using a long tongue depressor stick, some beads, some wire, and then this garland twist wrap stuff that you can get from the Dollar Tree. In fact, all of these supplies are from the Dollar Tree. Go ahead and use your wire scissors, cut off some wire, twist the very end, and then start threading on the beads. And you're not going to make this too long. I can't remember how many beads it was that I slipped on here, but I'm just going back and forth in the different sizes. And then we want to make a small 
ring. Nothing too big. I don't want to be able to put my hand through it, but maybe my daughter probably could. And then once it's done, go ahead and twist the ends to make sure it's nice and secure in place. I took those outside and I spray painted them red. And while they were drying, you can actually see one over to the side. I went ahead and took that tongue depressor stick and I cut out a dovetail on the end. And now I'm just sanding off all of the extra rough edges. Then I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to write all of my family members' names on these tongue depressor sticks that will now become like a little banner. I just think these are so sweet, especially if you like to, you know, think about your family members or if you're a grandparent and you want to have all your grandchildren's names on the Christmas tree, this is a really sweet DIY. Or if you're a crafter and want to give all of the grandkids' names to a grandma or a grandpa to put on their tree. It, like I said, this is such a sweet heirloom gift to give someone. Then I added some greenery up at the top, some little leaves, a little bow, and then I threaded on a piece of twine up at the top to make sure I had my knot. And then I pulled that knot down so it could conceal it because we don't want to see that messy knot up at the top. And then I just simply hot glued it into place and it was ready to hang up. For this DIY, we are gonna be using one of these cone trees that have the tinsel all over it and some yarn of your liking. And we are going to just unravel it, take it all off. Now I am going to take this yarn and I'm gonna tie a double knot on it first. And then I'm gonna just twist that knot underneath so you don't even see it and it's hidden inside. These trees are so easy to make and you just pick the color of yarn that you like the most and you are just gonna twist it and wrap it all the way around it. Now when you get to the bottom, it can get a little tricky. So use some hot glue and just take your time going around the bottom a couple of times until you've covered everything up. Make sure you don't wrap it too tight because you will find that you will use more yarn that way. It's better to wrap it loosely so that way it's on there nice, but it's not so tight that it's causing you to use double the yarn. So once you get to the end and you've wrapped it and you don't see anything poking through, go ahead and take that end piece of yarn and pull it underneath and glue it in place. Then up at the top, there is already a hole there. So I'm gonna just put in one of these shish kebab sticks and I'm going to just cut it down to size because I decided to put a finial on top of one of them and a star on top of the other. I made a large one and a small one by just cutting it down to a smaller size and then you'll have a set of these trees to display in your home. Now this next craft, I'm really excited about it because there are some of these really beautiful big ornaments that I see people hanging sometimes on their front doors, on their porch, sometimes hanging somewhere in their home. We are gonna take all of these random pieces and make some beautiful, large, vintage farmhouse ornaments. So what we're gonna do to start for the first one is we're gonna use two of these cups from the Dollar Tree, a large ornament, from the Dollar Tree and then these little cups I like to call them sacrament cups <laughs> they remind me of the little cups that we use at church when we take the sacrament so I'm gonna be using two of those and you can see that I'm using my E6000 and some hot glue for the long-term short-term hold and once you've got everything in place you've got the two cups the two bowls and the ornament then you're gonna add back on your cap so you can see here I'm using some hot glue. Now beware when you put the hot glue on the metal cap from the ornament, it will burn your fingers because you're just heating up metal and fingers on metal that's hot will burn you. So now we're gonna move on to the next ornament. I'm gonna use some champagne cups from the Dollar Tree, a large ornament, 
two sacrament cups, and then two bottoms from the champagne glasses. So you're gonna see here that I'm putting the two champagne glasses, one on the top and the bottom of the ball, and then I'm coming back in with the two extra bottoms from the champagne glasses, and I'm just putting those all together, and then at the bottom I added on one of those little sacrament cups like I called earlier, and we're gonna just glue them all into place so everything is nice and snug on there with our glue. Now at the very top, you're gonna go ahead and add on, again, that metal piece, so that way it's nice and secure and has a way to be able to hang up our ornaments. Now these are actually really lightweight, which is really awesome because they are all these clear pieces of plastic that you're seeing me work with. So now we're gonna make one more size of these ornaments. It's gonna be the smallest one. I'm taking this long, I think they're like long shot glasses. I don't know, I don't drink alcohol but it's these longer, they look like shot glasses to me. And then a smaller ornament, a sacrament cup, that's kind of weird to say, a shot glass with a sacrament cup, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna just keep moving forward from that. And then you're gonna put the top on. So here all three of them are. You can see how they all have different sizes, but they all have a consistent look to them. And now to tie them all together, we're gonna to take some of this bling from the craft section at the Dollar Tree, and we are gonna wrap it around all of the joints because we wanna hide that there are all these different pieces. When you put this on, it's gonna conceal that seam line and it's going to give the coolest texture ever. Now these type of ornaments for one can start anywhere from $25 and go all the way up to $100 depending on their size. These are the really big ornaments that you would see on like the Christmas trees at Disneyland and I just think they're so cool how big they are but I don't wanna pay the price for these ornaments. So now at the round part you can see that I ended up doing an X pattern on the actual ornament, the round ornament, and then right at their adjoining point, I came down the champagne glass and wrapped it around. So basically anywhere where you have a joint or an edge, you're gonna go ahead and put some of the bling. Then I took them outside and I spray painted them a really pretty Christmas red. And I'm gonna now go in and I'm going to distress with white. Now I love distressing with white. I don't get to do it too often, but whenever I do, it just has the coolest effect when you work with a really bright color. It really helps almost calm the color down some. It makes it look more vintage looking. And I just, I think it looks so pretty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our small paintbrush and we're just tapping it on top of that bling so it goes into all of those grooves and crevices and then you're gonna wipe away any extra that is too much because you wanna still be able to see the red coming through. Now we're gonna take some of these Thai garlands that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I love these things whenever they come out. I always try to grab a bunch of them because I use them all throughout the Christmas season. And then here's that berry garland that you all know I love so much. I'm gonna sneak that through the very top where our little holder or our little loop is to be able to hang up our ornament. And then I'm gonna twist it all on and then I wrap it around my finger to get this coiled look and I'm just gonna keep playing with it until I get the look that I like. Now, we're also going to be adding on some ribbon to make it look really pretty and give it that Christmassy look. So I have this Believe ribbon and again, that Buffalo check ribbon that the Dollar Tree is carrying for the Christmas season. And then to make it look extra special, I'm also gonna add on some lace to be able to hang it up and then, because I always try to find a way to sneak in little buttons and little details, we're gonna add a button to the center of our bow. Now, I don't want my lace to move, so I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue and pull the knot down to kind of conceal that at the bottom. I want the top of the ribbon loop to be really pretty. And then the Dollar Tree over at the checkout area always has their buttons, so I'm gonna add on green buttons in the middle of each one, and all together with these three different sizes it creates the most beautiful look these can be really pretty on a table they can be pretty hung up on a huge Christmas tree if you have a really big one and you don't want to pay those big prices for the ornaments
For this DIY, we are going to be using some of these wood planks and these two different fonts for rub-on stickers. Now I'm going to start by making my sides at my bottom of my box and I'm going to just trace where I need to cut the sides of my box. This is really easy to do. I'm using my miter box to be able to cut these pieces. You could technically cut them with your scissors too, but honestly, it would just tear your scissors up. So I'm using my miter box because I have it here on hand. Then I'm gonna add some hot glue and some wood glue, and I'm gonna just bring all of the sides together. So once I have the two long sides, I went ahead and added on the ends of the box. Doing the same exact thing, adding in the hot glue, and the wood glue for that long-term, short-term hold. Make sure you get all the extra off the side so it's not spilling out and you have a nice clean finished side. Then I painted the boxes a light gray and a beautiful forest green. On the light gray, I used some of those rub-on stickers. I love these things because they're so cool. It reminds me of my days when I was a scrapbooker. And then on the green box, I decided to paint on the word winter so the gray box says, baby, it's cold outside. And then the green box says winter. I think together these are so pretty. And in just a second, they're going to start to come together where you're going to see me stacking them and doing some really cool stuff with them. So just take your time if you're doing any hand painting. I always love this because it's so therapeutic for me. I always trace it out first with my pencil and then I go over it with a fine tip brush with my white paint. Now we're going to make something special for the box. I'm going to take some of these snowflakes that they have at the Dollar Tree, add one of these craft long sticks to it, and then I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and go ahead and work on putting in my foam into the boxes. So I just added some hot glue at the bottom and I'm just putting them all down into place and then I'm coming in with some greenery and some snowflakes that I put on those sticks and just really dressed it up and it just looks so cute together. For this DIY, I'm going to be using this staircase spindle that I also picked up from Habitat for Humanity, as well as some Dollar Tree products. You all know I love my Dollar Tree DIYs, and so I'm going to be using this staircase spindle to make the most beautiful farmhouse angel that I know you're all going to get so excited when you see how I create the wings, because it is really something. All right, we're going to take these two signs and we're going to lay them right next to each other with the spindle right in the middle. And we're going to start just tracing out these wings. Now, I love using these signs because you can cut them and shape them to whatever you might need for your project. It does take a little bit of elbow grease, but you know what? Once you get the shape you want, you can do some cool things. So here I am at this point. I'm taking my craft knife and I'm making sure I'm cutting on my mat. Don't ever cut just directly on your table, obviously, but I'm just going to say just in case you're a new craft and I'm just scoring all along these and I'm cutting them and snapping them as I go and if there's any rough edges I'm going to be snipping it with my scissors or my craft knife in any tough areas and then sanding it to get the shape that we need. Once I've got two of those done I put them to the side and we're going to start working on the body of the angel. So we're going to take this sign from this little wood plaque actually from the Dollar Tree. I filled in the holes and then I'm doing a countersink hole right here. My drill bit is not big enough. You all know if you've been watching for a while, I need to get bigger drill bits. But I'm going in with a smaller drill at this point and I'm gonna just pre-drill some holes to make sure I don't splinter or crack anything because this stairway spindle is pretty old and I don't wanna have any issues with it. So I went ahead and started my screw, got everything all lined up and I'm putting on some wood glue and some hot glue for that short-term, long-term hole that you all know I love so much. And now I'm going back in and I started to screw it in and now I'm just twisting to get it in place and then I'll go back in one more time to really sink in that screw and it should be nice and flat at the bottom. Now this is the cool part where the wings start to happen. I'm so excited about this part. I went ahead and took my staple gun and I'm just going to staple all up the spine of this angel and I'm gonna do it on both sides. And it is so secure on here, friends. Now this is where it really starts to come to life. I'm gonna take the smallest popsicle stick that there is, and then we're gonna just keep cutting them down. We wanna have the rounded edges. This is the bottom of the wing, and then we're gonna just keep 
adding on more pieces. As we add on more and more and more, we keep shifting our way up and just have fun with it, move things around, make sure that you're trying to cover up any gaps that would show that original sign. Once I got that part down, I moved up to the tongue depressor stick size, did a few rows of that, made sure I was curving along the edge, and then I moved on to these really big sticks that I picked up from Walmart. And I love these because they cover even more surface and this is really where it's going to start to take the shape of that wing. When you get to the top, just keep using your pencil to create the shape that you need, cut things out, and then just continue to layer until you get the desired look that you want on the wing. I really had a lot of fun creating this part and just shaping everything to get the look that I was going for and just kept working with it until the entire wing was completely covered. And make sure you go all the way into the groove between the stair spindle and the wing to make sure it's all nice and covered in there. Now once that was all done, I went ahead and moved on to the head. I'm just drilling out a hole, adding in one of these sticks, one of the craft sticks from the Dollar Tree, and then this ornament. When I saw this, I knew that this could be a head for an angel, so I snagged it. And how cool is it that it has the exact same scalloped texture as the wings? I thought that this was meant to be together. I was so thrilled over this. So once I added a little hot glue, I went ahead and twisted it onto the body of the angel. And now I wanted to create some depth and some texture to this angel and her wings. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a pretty gray color and I'm just gonna work in to all of those little crevices, making sure everything is covered in the gray color and making sure that I just keep tapping as I go. This is, I think, probably where it goes from just being a craft to a high-end looking item that you might see in an actual boutique. And then I made sure I flipped it over, got all the sides, got the back, and I'm gonna also paint the bottom base this color, but I'm gonna come back in with some white paint and dry brush over the wings and the feathers and I'm gonna dry brush over the base as well. Make sure you have very little paint on your brush as you're doing this, this is the dry brush technique, and then just keep working with it until you get that desired look that you want. Now I wanted to be able to have my angel holding up a wreath in between her because, well, I like little tiny wreaths and why not? So I went ahead and took some of this garland, twisted it around into a smaller wreath, and then to make it look more high-end, I'm gonna take some boxwood and I'm gonna add that to the wreath. But once I had everything all twisted into place, I'm now going to take this. I pick these up from Hobby Lobby on a really long vine and I just cut it up until I get everything all used up and then I go and pick up another one with my coupon. Now I'm gonna add some berries and I'm just gonna really finish off this look by making sure I don't have any bald areas on it. I wanted to make sure it looks really covered and really beautiful. And then the last, add a bow to finish the look and hang it on your angel. This DIY is a great one to try if you are a new crafter where it has a high-end, really beautiful look for Christmas. We are gonna take these items from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to trace out the size that I need on the fabric, cut it out. Once I have that all cut out to the size that I want, I'm then gonna take some hot glue and glue it down on that sign that was originally for the summertime. We're repurposing this. You can use this with any size of these signs that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree, but this is the one I had left over from summertime and I wanted to make sure that I used it. Then I'm gonna patch those holes and I'm gonna come back in with some white paint and paint over it with two coats of white paint. Once everything was dry and everything was really dry because I wanna warn you that these rub-on stickers, they will pull up the paint if it's not fully dry. So just keep that in mind. And then once it is all fully dry, go ahead and put on these rub-on stickers. We're gonna use the words, Merry Christmas. I thought this would be really pretty. And I cannot remember what friend it is, but I saw a friend 
use these berry garlands. If I can figure out who it was, I'm gonna link it down below with the supply list in my description box. I'm gonna try really hard to figure out who it was. I just cannot remember. And if it's a friend that's watching this video, will you let me know if this was the one that you did? I saw someone take these berry garlands and turn them into this really beautiful circle. And I thought, that is so pretty. I definitely wanna try that here on my channel. And I, I wanna make sure I give the person credit, whoever thought of that. So please leave a comment down below and let me know. So once I had that circle, I went ahead and added some ribbon, just as you're seeing here, and I decided to staple it down into place. I flattened down the staples on the other side because I didn't want them poking through, and then I just brought the ribbon around the back side, glued it all down into place, and then on the front, I came back in to hide the staple, and I added a ribbon. Now the reason why I did the staple was because I wanted to make sure the weight of this wreath on it was not going to eventually pull it off. Then I simply added in some greenery, sand to the sides, and it was ready to be displayed for Christmas. For this ornament, we are going to be using the small ones from the Dollar Tree, and we are going to start by just popping off the top from the ornament, and then we're going to fill it with white paint. Tap it around until all the sides have been covered, and then make sure you turn it upside down so it can properly drain out any excess paint that we don't need. Once it's dry, go ahead and use a new Sharpie marker. I'm gonna be using red, and you're gonna do eight lines. You're gonna do a crisscross of the first passing each other, and then you're gonna rotate it and go in between those spots. Then when you get to the end, you're going to start making some circles. This is going to start to look like a globe, the longitude and latitude lines. But then where it's going to become magical is we are going to start coloring them in. Anyone know what this pattern might look like? I know this is really popular right now, so leave a comment down below and let me know what you think this ornament is starting to look like. Now we're gonna go ahead and take some twine and we're gonna wrap that around the top part. I went ahead and put that back in the little cap and we're gonna take the twine and just at the very top, I wanna make sure I conceal that metal up in there. So we're just gonna keep threading it through the hole until I make it nice and tight and coiled in. And then anything extra, I'm just gonna cut it off and press that all down into place. So that way it looks really high quality. Once I've got all of that all snipped off and glued into place, I went ahead and moved on to decorating the front of it because I thought it would be really cute to add on some greenery and some berries. You're gonna see here that I'm adding on that slip loop knot that I like to do to make sure my ornaments stay front and forward. Whenever you put a hook on them, they're naturally going to want to turn and this is going to keep it facing forward when you hang it up. So once I've got that knot all done, I added on some of my boxwood with some berries and I just think this looks so pretty at this point. Once I did that, then I went ahead and added a really pretty double looped bow at the top and then it was ready to hang up on my Christmas tree and display. This DIY has a free printable for you all. I'm gonna link that down below in my description box. But I went ahead and cut them all out with a little bit of a white border around them. And then I took some red and white scrapbook paper and I'm going to cut the width, not the width, the length, the length of the printable. And I'm gonna make sure I follow those pretty candy cane stripes. So once I've got a nice beautiful ribbon, where I want it to be placed. I'm gonna go ahead and glue on my printable and then I'm gonna just make sure it's stuck nice and secure into place. And at this point, you then can take it and wrap it around something. So I'm gonna be using this glass jar from the Dollar Tree. We see everybody working with these all the time, but I thought this would be a really pretty thing to put a treat in for someone. These are really high-end looking treat jars. 
other than just sticking it in a little plastic bag. I thought that these would be so cute to give to someone as a gift. And then afterwards they can put candles in them or they can put pencils in them or even spatulas in their kitchen if they wanted to. And I'm going to show you a couple different versions to do with this printable. So once I wrapped it around and I glued it into place, I added a bow. Now I wanted to show the new Hershey Kisses. These are the cute wrappings that they have, little Santa hats and little Christmas lights all over them. I thought they were so cute. I went ahead and filled that all up and then I moved on to those cans you saw earlier for this particular DIY. I'm going to use my crocodile and I'm going to sneak it around. These are the cans that have the lids where they have the tabs and you can pull them open. These ones are always a little bit trickier to get into the crocodile, but it works just fine too. You just have to kind of wiggle it in there a little bit and then you can go ahead and punch your holes. If you had the kind of can where you're using your can opener, you won't have to worry around getting around that lip. So once I had my holes punched, I went ahead and added some berry garland on one of them. And then on the other one, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do in just a second. But this one, I'm adding on some of that same striped paper because I wanted them to all look, you know, like each other and have that theme going with the stripes and then now over on the second one or the third one actually you're going to see that i'm using the last remainder of that stripe paper i'm wrapping it around and i'm just going to glue that in place and add on the tag as well and then once I have those on, I can go ahead and go back to that other can that I was decorating. I added on some greenery, I added on some little berries and a bow, and you're gonna see me pull it all together here in just a second. I ended up using my good scissors on this wire garland and I was instantly regretting it like, oh, I grabbed the wrong scissors. <laughs> and then fill these last ones up with treats and hand them out to the people that you care so much for and are missing this Christmas season. This is another easy DIY to accomplish. We're gonna take this sign from the Dollar Tree, we're gonna pop off the Happy Holidays, flip it over and take off the ribbon and the staples. Once you've got all of that off and removed, you're ready to paint it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some white paint. I'm just gonna put it all over generously and I'm actually gonna paint it two coats of white paint because we wanna make sure it's covered nice and well and then once I was all done painting that and it was dry, I took my pencil and I sketched on the letters N and then I made a space E-L for the word Noel. So now I'm just gonna take my time just sketching them on the way I want them to. You could always print off letters and trace them on and do it that way, but I am I like doing free-handed letters for myself personally, but that's only because I've just been doing it and practicing for so long. So once I had everything all sketched out, I went ahead and started painting it a really pretty slate gray color. I loved how it looked on the white versus going with the traditional black that we would normally pull for with the farmhouse look. I really loved this dark slate gray color. Then once I was all done with the letters and it dried, I went ahead and took some brown paint and I'm just lightly distressing it and then coming back in with some white and going over it to make sure it wasn't too much. And then I'm gonna lightly dry brush over the letters cause it's gonna give it that frosty look for Christmas time. I think this is just so pretty. The texture really popped out on the letters. Now I'm gonna take some of the garland that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna twist it around into a small circle, give it a haircut and friends, I have learned that if you do give these things a haircut, which I recommend because it makes them look more high end, do them over a couple of tissues and that'll keep them from statically clinging to your desk and going everywhere. So once you wiped it all up and it's all tidied, I went ahead and added in some pretty a lighter green than the garland boxwood because I really wanted to give it that higher end look. And then I added on a buffalo check ribbon with some pine cones. And now this is one of the reasons why I love this crocodile tool, because I can punch right through this sign without any issues. So I can zip tie the wreath right onto the sign. That way you don't have to worry about it falling off or dealing with hot glue. It's just 
kind of stay on there not having any issues so I just went through the back brought it up and around the wreath back down through the hole and then pulled it nice and tight and it's ready to display somewhere in your home For this DIY, we are going to be using all of our supplies from the Dollar Tree except for the painter sticks and the large ribbon that I got during the end of Christmas sales from Joann's. I love picking up my ribbon there because it is always so, so affordable and just right on budget for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a miter box and we are going to cut down these painter sticks. Now I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle and you can see that they are going opposite directions on the ends of them because we want to bring them together and miter a frame. So here I am bringing them all together with some hot glue and we're going to make this really strong and secure because just hot glue itself is not going to hold it together especially when it comes to wood. So I went ahead and just got it started and then I'm going to come in with my tongue depressor sticks and I'm going to cut down a piece a little bit smaller to fit on the back and this is going to help support that corner coming together. So once you've got that all on there with some hot glue, then you're going to go ahead and move around to the other sides of the frame. Continue to do the exact same pattern where you're just bringing it together and then putting on a piece of that popsicle stick or tongue depressor stick, whichever one you might have, but I do like the tongue depressor sticks a little bit better just because they're thicker and they have a better coverage. Then at this point, I'm going to use my staple gun to staple it all together, but I realized the staple that I had on hand was a little bit too long and it would go through the front. So I'm going to add on another piece on the back of that so that I can go ahead and staple through and it cleared all the way through without going through on the front side. So you can see here that the frame is nice and strong and secure. And then I'm going to take my white paint and I'm going to fill in any of those cracks where there might be that seam line you're going to notice. You won't notice it once you go over it with some white paint. So go ahead and just paint on the front and back side to make sure it's nice and clean and ready to go. While those are drying off to the side, I went ahead and moved on to a mini garland. Now I love these garland vines from the Dollar Tree and I like to turn them into mini wreaths. So what I do is I take a nice long piece and I twist it around into a small circle and I'm going to give it a haircut. Now beware, these things make a mess when you give them a haircut. They just kind of stick and cling to the table. So whenever I'm done I always like to take a tissue and I like to just help pick up any extras. So right now you're just going to notice that my desk is a little bit messy. Please excuse that. <laughs> and then as I was done giving it a haircut, I went ahead and added on some of these berries. I think these berries are so beautiful. And anytime you have any of them where the white is showing, I like to go in with a little bit of red paint. And I just kind of tap it on there to touch it up to make sure that it looks good. Now I went back in with my heating gun because I wanted to dry the paint and as I was doing it, it actually started melting them just a little bit. But funny enough, I love how it ended up looking even more. So it was a happy accident. I think we all have these sometimes, but just know that if you do use your heat gun on this, it will start to make things kind of pull in tighter and want to melt a little bit. But I, like I said, I was happy with how it looked. So here I am at this point, I'm figuring out which ribbon I wanted. I went with this ribbon from the Dollar Tree for this particular part. I'm still going to use that thicker ribbon, but later towards the end, you'll see here in just a few more minutes. And I added on that lace around the wreath and the frame to bring them together. And then I added a bow. And now I'm going to just take some of my brown paint and I'm going in and just kind of tapping the sides a little bit to give it that farmhouse feel. Now here's where that ribbon comes back in to play from Joann's. I went ahead and cut a few different strips of it. And this is so that they can all hang and be together as one DIY one decor piece and then at the very top I ended up putting another piece up there at the top and then I took a piece of twine and I'm hiding it behind the ribbon so it has a nice clean finish and then I added a bow. For this DIY, we are going to be using these supplies from the Dollar Tree and then these wood pieces from Hobby Lobby that I picked up in a pack. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a marking so that I can get three different sizes, large, medium, and small. And then once I had those all cut out, I went ahead and painted them over with a really dark gray color. Once everything was completely covered with one coat, that's all you're gonna need, I went ahead and took my white paint and a napkin and I just dry brushed on some white paint until I got that farmhouse crackle type paint texture that I was looking for. This was a really easy step to do, so just make sure you just have fun with it and get it to your liking. Then I patched the holes and sanded them, and real quick I wanna give a huge shout out and thanks to Lisa for sending me these countersink drill bits. I am so grateful for how thoughtful you were to send these to me. They really have become so handy already, and I just love them, so thank you so much. So I went ahead and did some countersink holes. This is gonna allow the drill to be able to sink that screw all the way down in there so that you don't see it when you put it on your table and it doesn't scratch your table. Once I had all of these pieces of wood mounted onto the white plaques that I'm painting, as you can see here, I went ahead and moved on to those pieces that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And I just cut down some of these craft sticks to the size I wanted and I'm painting them yellow after gluing on those sticks to them because these are now gonna become little flames and wicks. Then I drilled a hole and just sunk that right down in there with some hot glue to make sure it stays in there. And then I'm just distressing it a little bit and I thought it would be so cute to add a bow up on top just like I saw in my inspiration from an Etsy shop. I thought these were so cute and I just wanted you all to see how affordable these are to make and so cute for the Christmas time to put on your table. So once you've got your bow on, just go ahead and snip off the extra twine that's on it and then hot glue it all into place. This craft, we're gonna be taking a large pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, a metal welcome word sign from the Dollar Tree, some boxwood greenery from Hobby Lobby, and then some greenery from the Dollar Tree. And by the way, these red peonies are my favorite that they had come out this season. They are so beautiful. I've been using them very sparingly, and they are going to be used on this and I always am so reluctant anytime I ever get them out because I just think, oh, I'm going to run out and they're like my favorite. So here I am with my crocodile. You saw me punching some holes. I love the crocodile tool just because it goes through metal. And once I had those holes all in place where I needed them to, I took out the metal word and the pizza pan outside and I spray painted them both to make it look nice and high end. And then once I was done with that, I'm gonna take some of the garland. I took two long strands that would make that curve long enough. And then I zip tied them right to the pan. This is gonna make sure that nothing falls off because I just, friends, I don't trust hot glue on metal. It's just always gonna come off. I really like things to look high end and not fall apart when you put them out, especially on your front door. So once I've got that on, I ended up gluing in the berries some of the boxwood. It's really amazing how when you put on these boxwood stems with that garland greenery from the Dollar Tree, how it just really elevates the look of it. I really love combining different greeneries like that. I think it looks so beautiful. Now I'm taking a ribbon and I'm cutting the tails and I'm just gluing those down into place and then I'm gonna add on my bow and glue all that down. Fluff it out the way that you want it to look and then I'm gonna take some of those red peonies and I'm gonna glue two of them down lower and then one up higher in around the bow because we're gonna add one more bow on top of this tan bow. So once you've got all of those glued into place, I'm gonna move on, let all that dry for a second and move on to the word welcome for the front of our sign or our wreath that we're making. And I'm just gonna add in some E6000 and that's gonna really hold it down. And then that hot glue is gonna just keep it in place while it continues to dry. Now I wanted to rough up the edges just a little bit because I did like that it had that metally shiny look coming through that gray spray paint. So now I'm going in with some E6000 and you don't have to do this part if glitter is not your thing, but I thought it looked like frost on the pan. I thought this made it look really cute and it took it from it looking like a pizza pan to looking more like an intentional home decor piece. So I added on some E6000. I'm adding on a lot of glitter just so it makes sure it catches all over and I'm tapping it down to make sure it's just really worked in there. And then I'm gonna shake it all off 
And then once that's all drying, I went ahead and got one more bow that was a gingham bow tad right in the middle. For this DIY, we're going to be using a book that I always am tearing things out from and one of these plastic ball ornaments. Now these books, I pick them up from the Dollar Tree, so I never feel bad about cutting them up because I'm never planning on reading them. I use them for my crafts because I love the look of text paper, especially for a modern farmhouse look. It just looks so pretty, so pretty. You can even use this text paper with like a retro look. I just think it works for everything, but that's just me speaking. So. Go ahead and cut them into strips, not too thick. You want them to be thin enough to be able to lay nicely over your ornament. And then you're gonna make sure you're cutting off that end part of the page so you don't have that blank paper. You want it to actually have all the text on it because then it'll look more cohesive. Now you're gonna take your Mod Podge and you are going to rub that all over the ornament and then you're gonna take those strips of paper and you're gonna simply just start gluing them down. Now make sure you get the air bubbles out of them because you want them to lay as flat as you possibly can. For the first few, I let them be nice long strips that came all the way down. And then as I moved on, you don't want it to be clumpy and bulky at the bottom. So make sure you cut them off towards the bottom so it lays nice and flat. Then I went ahead and popped back in the metal top and I'm gonna take some of this Buffalo check ribbon. I love this with the text paper. And I'm gonna simply just glue it around the rim of it and curl it up onto the side, gluing it all nice and flat in place. Use a popsicle stick where you need to to push everything down because the metal and the hot glue together really heat up strong and it will burn you pretty bad. Then I'm gonna take a bow and I'm just going to put some hot glue and just put that right down into place and it's ready to display on your Christmas tree. This DIY is really easy for anyone who's wanting to try some crafts this Christmas season. Go ahead and take two of these different glass stem candle votives that they have at the Dollar Tree over in their home decor area. Two of these glass jars that they also have there for candles and then two of their candles that they have. Now to make sure that the glass stays on long term, you're gonna take some E6000 you're gonna create a circular pattern right there, and then you're gonna leave some spaces in between to add in the hot glue. That hot glue is gonna dry over time and it's gonna allow that E6000 to really seal and bond the glass together. Now I like to kind of roll it around on there to make sure everything was nice and glued down. And then once they were all in place, Go ahead and take whatever ribbon it is that you like. You can even add some greenery, some berries to this. I kept it really clean and simple to make it look that high-end pottery barn look. And I'm just gonna take this really pretty ribbon from the Dollar Tree and add a bow and some tails. Then simply add in your candles and you're ready to display. This DIY is such a beautiful ornament to accomplish. You're gonna need some wooden beads, some wire, and a ribbon of your liking. You're gonna start by cutting off a piece of wire to your desired size, because you can do this in a lot of different sizes. And then you're gonna put on the beads that you want, twist it at the bottom, making it almost like an oval shape. And as you twist it, make sure that the beads are nice and tight on there and then twist it off to knot it and get a completed finished hold on those beads. Now we're gonna take a ribbon, fold it in half, open that loop, pull that ribbon through, and then you're gonna just keep zhuzhing it up until you get it to a place that you want it to look like and then go ahead and just open up those ribbons and making sure that they are the desired look that you want. Add a bow right on top, cut off those ends to make them look as pretty as you want. You can do a dovetail or a little angled cut. 
and you are ready to hang this up on your tree or even a doorknob. How adorable could that be to put that on a doorknob? I just love these and they're so easy to make and they're so cost efficient for Christmas decor. So give it a try and let me know what you think. This DIY is so easy to accomplish. I'm going to be taking this bell that I found at the Dollar Tree. I thought it was just a little too blingy for my style. So I went ahead and removed all the florals and the tinsel-y type things on top. And I also cut off that little hook that would allow me to hang it up. I just snipped that right off. And now I'm going to take some E6000 and some hot glue and I glued the handle in place so it wouldn't move. Then I took it outside and I spray painted it a really pretty light gray color and now I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to simply dry brush all over this bell because I wanted to make sure the poinsettias were coming forward and I wanted it to look frosty as if it had been sitting outside on your door. So now I'm going to wrap a ribbon around it, add a bow, and then I'm going to come back in on the top. I added in a little craft stick and I'm gluing it into place so that I can add a finial on top of it. I thought this looked really cute and I love the wood contrast with the gray paint and the buffalo check ribbon. Then I added some pine cones as you can see there in the center of my bow and I drilled a couple of holes in the bell right at the center bottom because I wanted to be able to make sure that it was gripping onto the bell and onto the sign. So now I'm just adding in some extra glue on the sides to help reinforce it so it doesn't wiggle or fall off over time. And then I'm just going to go and hand paint on the number 25 because I thought this would be so beautiful for Christmas time. Over the last weekend, I was at a boutique store and I came across these gorgeous 3D ornaments that were snowflakes. And I knew that we could make these so much cheaper with the Dollar Tree ones. They were actually selling for $20 a piece. And today we're gonna make this for like $1.25 because we have to count in the paint, right? And the snow stuff we're gonna put on it. So maybe even like $1.50 for each one versus $20. <laughs> so you can see here that I found a pack of snowflakes at the Dollar Tree. There were three inside the pack. And I'm going to add on some E6000 and some hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take one of the snowflakes and we're going to cut it straight in half. And it cuts really easy. Just take your time doing it. And we are going to take that glue and we're going to just nestle in that snowflake we cut in half on one side. This is going to allow the snowflake to look 3D and dimensional and then once that's dry from the hot glue holding it in place you're then going to flip it over and you're going to do it on the same same thing on the other side. Cut the snowflake in half that was the third one in the box and then go ahead and just glue them all together. This turned out so much better than I even thought it would and I took it outside at this point and spray painted it gray because the one I saw in the boutique that was so cute it was a metal snowflake that they had added some white paint to and all kinds of little snow crystals and pretty things. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to take some snow from the Dollar Tree and then these little balls that are supposed to look like these little snowballs. Listen friends, if you've worked with these before, you will know that they statically cling to everything. So I have learned that the best thing to do is to put it in a Ziploc bag. You flick the side so it goes down because you're releasing that static cling to it. And then I just fold it down enough to be able to create, you know, a place where I can work with them. Last year, I tried to put them inside of a bowl and they went berserk. They went everywhere. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to work with them, put them in a Ziploc bag. Then I'm going to add some paint and some hot glue and I'm going to just keep dipping it inside of that bag to get the snow on it. Now real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to my boys. They just decided to start their own Lego channel and I'm so proud of them. They're gonna have a video coming this next week where they're gonna be reviewing Legos. I'm so excited for them because they've been debating this forever. If you're interested or you know someone who loves Legos, I'm gonna link the link down below just because I'm a proud mom and I just wanna give them a shout out because it's, you know, they're trying to find something that's positive in this world right now and online learning has been so hard for them. 
watching them go through it, I just, my heart breaks for them. They miss being able to have a relationship with a teacher and feeling comfortable to ask questions. They just don't feel like they can ask the teachers questions when they're in the Zoom meetings. Leave a comment down below to let me know if your kids are feeling the same way about Zoom. So I'm just really proud of them and I thought I would just give them a shout out today. If you love Legos, go check them out. So once I had all of that all over, I wanted you guys to see, I get questions all the time from friends asking if my hands ever get dirty because I clean them quite frequently for you all so my hands look clean in the video. But yes, I am actually a very, very messy crafter. Not meaning my space on my table, I actually keep my space clean, but I, my hands do get dirty quite a bit and then I just clean them with wipies. I keep those by my desk. Okay. So now I'm gonna move on to the ribbon part. There are a couple different options from the Dollar Tree. Right now they have this beautiful red and white gingham ribbon, and then they have the black and white gingham ribbon. And I love these ribbons. They also have lace and some twine, so you have a lot of different options to be able to hang these snowflakes up with. But I'm gonna go with the red because I'm doing the red and white this year, like I said, in my home. And then what you do is you just tie a nice little slip knot up at the top to hang it up. And then at the base, I'm gonna go ahead and not tie a knot. I actually wanted to not make it too bulky. So I just kind of fold it over the ribbon and I pinched it down with some hot glue to make it stay in place. You can do whatever you want at the top part, but that's just how I did it because I wanted to make it look nice and flat. Now you're gonna see me getting every single drop out of my paint because I am a true believer in every drop. I don't want any drop to be wasted in my paint. So I'm just getting out the last of it, which is why I was, you know, throwing that part that I had filmed. And now I'm gonna go back in to conceal where I glued it at the top. I wanna make it look a little bit cleaner so it looks like that high-end boutique look. And I just added some paint, some more hot glue, and then I'm gonna dip it back down inside to make sure that I get that look that I'm going for that is nice and clean and organized. And then anything else that's extra on there, you're just gonna pull off any of those strings from the hot glue and just tap it a couple times to make sure you don't have any things that are flying away and making a mess in your house. And then you're ready to hang it up and display in your home. For this craft, we are gonna be taking this thick ribbon that I used in another craft where I'm gonna be using this all throughout Christmas because I found it on a really good deal. Some of the Buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree, this 3D wreath form, these metal letters, some greenery and some berries, and then these garland twist ties. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart the wreath form. We're gonna take the biggest ring that they have and I show it towards the end but I don't actually show it fully you're gonna see that I actually bent the wreath form to be more of an oval shape there's something about it being an oval shape that makes it look so different and more high in like you would see in a boutique so I actually just gently squeeze the sides in until it makes more of an oval shape but what you're gonna see me doing right now is I'm taking some twine and I'm working with this frosted fern I love this frosted fern I think it is so pretty and I love that the Dollar Tree came out with it this year I wish I could have found more of it but I only ended up getting a couple of picks because it was so popular and already gone when I first came across it so I'm just gonna take some twine and I'm twisting it on and getting the fern all settled on there and then I twist a little more glue a little more until it's nice and secure on there it's a little tricky I'm gonna admit when you're first working on this wire but once you get it going those first couple of pieces after a while you start to get your rhythm with it and it all starts to come together and then it becomes really easy to start adding on like the berries and any of the other picks or things that you want to put on it so just know that getting that fern started Started is the hardest part with the twine. Once I've got all of those twisted on, I went ahead and added in my berries. And again, I don't want them to come off. So you're gonna see me here working with the twine again, just kind of getting in there and trying to make sure that you don't see the twine. I think that's where it can look, you know, like a DIY. <laughs> we wanna make it look high in. So when people see it, they just think that is so beautiful. And then you surprise them and say, oh, I made that for my house. Yeah, I like to craft. And then your friends or whoever is that's stopping by, they will just say they think it's so pretty. And you'll be so excited because you made it. 
So this is the fun part. There are lots of bell options out there. I found these red bells at the Dollar Tree. I almost used those. I also really liked these larger ones that they had at the Dollar Tree, but I ended up settling on these bells that they had in the Target Dollar Bullseye spot. I It was a garland and I thought these bells would be so cute. Very magnolia looking, high end, where they charge so much for their wreaths and I knew that we could make this look really really beautiful on a wonderful budget of just a couple of bucks you know i like to always shoot right around ten dollars or below for my diys so i took a piece of twine i ended up looping a knot at the top and then you can see here that once i cut those bells away from that banner or garland that they had i ended up getting four of them to be able to have a different lengths and i'm tying that right in the center where i added in all of my greenery now i'm going to take some of this ribbon i'm going to first tie on a long ribbon because i want that to be dangling down with the bells i thought that would look so beautiful so magnolia so studio mcgee i love studio mcgee too i've loved them for actually a long time they're from california where we lived before we moved to missouri I just think that this would look so beautiful, so high end. So once you've got your beautiful bow on there, I've just said beautiful like five times, friends, because I really was having fun making this wreath. I'm gonna take some of that thicker ribbon and I'm gonna just, you can see here how I snuck it underneath and then I pulled it back over, glued it in place, and then came back over and then went and did it over to the other side. I'm zigzagging it back and forth to make it look like it's a ribbon, almost a banner ribbon flowing. And then I'm gonna take this metal word believe and I glued it on with hot glue, but once again, I don't always trust hot glue completely. So I'm taking a small wire, sneaking it through the ribbon, pinching it as I'm pushing it down in there. Once I've got it nice and tight and snug, I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm going to just twist it and then cut off the extra and hot glue it so it doesn't scratch your front door. That would just be the worst. Don't let it scratch your paint. Add a little hot glue, it'll keep it safe from that wire poking or scratching anything. And this is what it looks like close up and after that, you're ready to display it on your front door. For this DIY, I want to show you all how easy it is to make a beautiful manger and it costs absolutely nothing. This is a dollar sign from the Dollar Tree. It's left over from the summertime. I pulled it out because it was the perfect size. Now I found the center point and I brought up an angle on both sides to create a roof line because we are going to be creating a nativity scene. So I'm just going to snap these off after scoring them. I love these boards because they score really easy. You can use a box cutter that works really well, but I just use my craft knife that I have in my room. And then I went ahead and just cleaned it up with a pair of scissors. Once I had that cut down to size, I'm now going to take my white paint and I'm going to give it two coats of white paint. Once the white paint was dry, I went ahead and moved on to Mary and Joseph. Now I, I'm just gonna simply take some green, create this shape for the body, and then come back in with different tints of green. Just keep playing with it and adding on these different layers. Then I'm gonna move on to Mary, and it's gonna be the same concept. We're gonna just continue to add in different depths of paint and texture. And it's so easy to do this, friends. If you are not a painter and you're afraid to try these kind of projects, I promise you this is so easy, and I'm just gonna walk you through all of these steps and it's so fun. Now I saw this as inspiration over on Etsy and I thought, holy smokes, it's so expensive. And I'm gonna show you all how easy it is to make this and it all it cost was a dollar and some paint. You saw there I was making the manger, I made the little legs for the bed and I rounded it and then I added on some hay and now I'm adding on the head and the body of baby Jesus' swaddling. Then over on Joseph, I made a little cap and then brought it down his back. And then the same thing on Mary, a little cap, bring it down her back, and then add in some of that texture with different depths of paint. Now with baby Jesus, we're gonna switch that thin brush and circle around the body, the head, the swaddling, and then I'm coming back in with a small brush again 
and adding in some yellow. I really wanted it to have a pretty yellow in there. I thought that would be really cute. And then I'm going to come in with a darker color. And this looks a little scary at first, but you just keep playing with it. So you can see here that I'm just adding it in, coming back in with some tan, a little bit of white, and I bring back in some more tan and some more of the dark color. And I just keep playing with it until I get that layered look that I'm looking for. And then on his face, I went ahead and made it nice and tinted around the edges and then I brought in a little bit more on his side. Now over on Mary, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just continue to bring in those colors, play with it, have fun. Don't worry about making a mistake. These kind of projects are so perfect for trial and error and just playing with it. And if you don't like it, you just add in more of a lighter color or a darker color until you get the look that you want. So you can see here, that I just kept playing with it. And now up at the top of Mary, I did add that little detail coming down the back of her head because it almost looks like a little ribbon coming down. Now up at the top, we're gonna just simply add a star. And this is really easy. Go one way, go the other way. And then the center points, go one way, go the other way. And then once it's all dry, you can come back in and we're gonna distress it a little bit. So I'm adding in just a little bit of polka dots to make it look like the night sky. And it's not gonna show up very well at the end. I wish it does, because I add in a little bit of blue and it really looks so beautiful in person. So once it was all dry, I just dry brushed on some of this grayish blue color and it picked up all of the layers of paint that I put on with the white. And then at the bottom, I'm coming in with almost a mustard yellow to make it look like hay at the bottom. And then I'm coming in with some brown and I'm just distressing it around the sides. Now friends, we could totally stop here. And y'all know me, we could just lean it up against something or we can go one step further and make it even more special. So I have these little stacking blocks from the Dollar Tree. I just line them up along the bottom and then I'm gonna take my staple gun and just staple those on and let them sit for a second. Then I'm gonna take these really big sticks that I get at Walmart. They're like giant tongue depressor stick. And then I'm just gonna cut off the round part and put them up at the top of the house. And I'm gonna put them right in the center so that we can put some supportive bars in there. And these are just the little craft stick dowels that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So I glued them down and I'm just putting that right in there. And I'm gonna do it also in the back side, and then I'm all gonna add some more hot glue back there because it's okay if it's on the back side. It's a little bit thicker with the glue. And that's really gonna secure the roof. And then for the sides, I added in the longer dowels to make it look like it's the walls. Now on the back side, we could leave it there or we could go a little bit further. I took some of this buffalo check fabric that I had on hand because it's kind of the theme of this video. And now I'm going to take some more of those stacking blocks and I'm gonna glue them into place and then staple them all into place. At the bottom, you wanna make sure you put something down there so it doesn't scratch your table. So some felt or some extra fabric. And then come back in with some of this raffia, glue it into the corners, distress the wood. I used a kind of a, I don't know, an orangey brown color with some white. And I really love how it turned out. For this DIY, we are going to take this wooden star from the Dollar Tree and we are going to make one of the easiest DIYs. We are going to just simply paint it white or whatever color you want, honestly. And then once it's all covered and dried, we're then going to take it and we're going to use a ruler and we're going to create a shiplap look by using a thin pin and a ruler and we're just going to create lines going across the star this will give it that shiplap look really easy to do take your time on this and i'm just using the width of my ruler and i keep moving up all the way to the top now you can use your silhouette or your cricut for this if you don't feel comfortable with hand painting you can do that with all of my diys but i always want to encourage everyone to try something new to learn a new skill especially when it comes to crafting i find that hand painting is so therapeutic for me and it's just so fun as you continue to do it, your skill will get better and better. So you can use vinyl or you can use your hand painting. And once you're done, go ahead and seal it. 
I found that it's important to seal it when you're using these rub-on stickers from the Dollar Tree so that way they don't peel off the paint. And then add a bow at the top and you're ready to display it. For this DIY, there is a free printable that is linked down below, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And we're going to be using two of those as well as these golden little berries and the frosted fern that I love so much, so much this Christmas season. Now go ahead and start by cutting off that white border and then we're going to just simply create a cone shape. Add some glue on the end and then you're going to just keep scrolling it around until you create your cone. So you can see here that I started to do it and I pulled back so y'all can see. And then I'm gonna add my glue and then I'm just gonna make sure I have my spot where I want it to land. And then I'm just gonna coil it out to create the cone. Once you've gotten all the way around, you're then gonna add some hot glue at the end of that paper and then just continue to roll it until everything is glued into place. Now keep in mind you want the O Little Town of Bethlehem to be on the outside, so just be mindful when you're rolling it. Now at the top I just flattened it out and then did a little scoop in because we're gonna turn this into the cutest ornament or you can even put it on your door. It could be wherever you wanna put it in your house. Then the second printable, we are gonna cut a big circle and then start coiling it in because we're gonna make one of those roses that you just keep twisting it from the end we are going to twist 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 all the way down till you get to the bottom now it's important at the very bottom when you're cutting your spiral circle make sure you leave a piece at the end so that you can end the rose on that it's a nice circle at the end and then you just put some hot glue push the flower all down into there and just keep playing with it until you get it to how you like it then once you're done Go ahead and glue that right onto your cute little cone you made. I'm going to add on some of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree that I just absolutely love. I was lucky enough to find a whole bunch of this and I will be using it I'm sure all throughout 2021. And then I added in a piece of foam and I'm coming back in with some of those berries, that frosted fern, and then some Spanish moss and I added a simple bow. I was so excited when I came up with this idea. Now I have seen these signs sitting around in my craft room for quite some time. They were for the summertime and I decided I wanted to take them and turn them into really cute decor wrapped present boxes that I can put underneath my Christmas tree. You know how whenever we're getting ready for Christmas to come, we don't really have presents underneath the tree yet and it looks a little bare. So these are really cute to put underneath your tree or you can also put them on your front porch. To make them, it's really easy. You're gonna use some dowel sticks and you're gonna need five of these pieces in the same size. And you can see as I'm bringing the corners together, I just keep adding the dowel sticks in there with a lot of hot glue. You're gonna to wanna to use a lot of hot glue because it's gonna to continue to reinforce it. And then as you keep adding on a new side, add another dowel stick until you get all four sides built. Then you're gonna take your fifth piece and you're gonna put your ones that you've combined together on top and you're gonna use a marker to draw a line because we're gonna cut this down to size. These are really easy to snap and get down to the size that you want. So you're just gonna take your craft knife and you're gonna score a couple times on the same spot, making sure that you got a nice straight line where you marked it with your pen. And then, this is my favorite part, you just flip it over and it snaps so easily. Then to clean up the edge, you're just gonna take a pair of old scissors and you're gonna trim off that extra piece and then add some glue to the top and then just put that right on there. Once that is on and nice and secure, don't forget to go inside and add in those extra dowels. Now you're gonna see me switch over to the smaller box because I just could not get the bigger box on film because it just I didn't have enough space where I was filming. So I switched to the smaller box that's more of a square shape, and what I did was I took some fabric that I liked and I'm just simply pulling it up all around. I laid the fabric down first, put the box in, and then I'm coming up as tight as I can on all four sides. And then when I get to 
getting that all nice and glued on the inside, I'm pulling it over on the sides and doing like a little tuck and a fold so it looks like when you're wrapping a present. Then I'm gonna take some of this ribbon that I found last year for clearance after Christmas time from, I think it was Joann's. Oh, they always have the best ribbon on clearance after Christmas. I went ahead and picked that up and I'm just gonna use that to wrap around the box so it makes it look like a really beautiful ribbon. Cut off a couple extra pieces and then I added a bow. So I'm gonna link that bow video down below if you wanna see how I make my bows. I don't make bows traditionally how most people do because this is actually how a lot of the stores make them. I learned this years ago when I used to work at a party supply store. It was hands down my favorite job I ever had as a teenager, blowing up balloons, wrapping presents. And all you have to do now is add in a couple of picks and you are good to go. For this DIY, we're gonna be using some raffia. This is a leftover grass skirt from the summertime, a clear ornament, a wooden bead, and some felt. I took a circular cup that would fit in a nice size on the ornament, and then I just traced around it with a marker, and then cautiously I'm taking my craft knife and I'm cutting it out right where that line was. Now you can see here that it is now open so I can put something inside of it. Now I'm gonna add in some hot glue. Don't add in too much because it does melt the ornament if it's too hot, so you don't want it to have any issues, but enough that you can add in your raffia. And then I'm gonna take the end of a pick from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put that right on the wooden bead and glue it into place so that way it really secures into the fabric and it won't just pop off over time, especially if little children are picking it up and playing with it. And then I'm taking a rectangle shaped piece of fabric and I'm gonna just keep playing with it until I get it swaddled to look like baby Jesus. Now this is such a sweet, fun DIY to try. It really costs hardly anything and once you nestle your baby Jesus down inside the bundle of hay, it is just so sweet and darling to add to your Christmas tree. So go ahead and add that in cautiously so you don't burn your finger. And then up at the top of the ornament, I'm gonna add a really pretty lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm simply going to just fold it in half, loop it through the hole, come back through that little opening of the ribbon, pull it nice and snug and then up at the top, I like to have a nice clean finish up at the top then instead of just using those metal hooks, I'm going to just connect those two ribbons up at the top laying them flat on each other. And then to finish off the look, I'm gonna just make a simple bow out of the ribbon lace to match. And then I'm just gonna glue that right into place and it's ready to hang up on your Christmas tree. For this DIY, we are gonna be using five of these wood blocks from the Dollar Tree, as well as a long skewer stick that we're gonna be cutting down into a whole bunch of little nubby pieces. This is gonna bring all of these blocks together. So we are gonna drill a hole in the first one, only on one side, and then on the other four, we're gonna drill a hole on the top and the bottom. Make sure you're checking to make sure the hole that you're drilling is the right size for your little nubby pieces that we just cut so we can bring it all together and make it really strong and sturdy. So I went ahead and added in some wood glue into those holes and then added in the pegs. We're gonna call them pegs. I'm gonna stop calling them nubby pieces. <laughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and add on some hot glue and bring them together. Now, to make this a little bit different and special, I'm gonna just rotate those pieces as I'm putting them on. And then once they're all dry and in place, I'm gonna go ahead and use a really pretty light gray color for this. And I'm gonna make sure I go all the way around all the sides on the top and the bottom. And I don't want it to, to be so saturated and gray. I wanna make sure that wood is still coming through with a little bit of that wood look to it. Now we're gonna take an end of a floral pick piece from the Dollar Tree. I snap that off and I'm gonna glue that in at the very top because we are gonna thread on a wooden bead and then as well as one of these little finial tops 
to make the top of this piece look really finished and really beautiful. So go ahead and add some hot glue as you're putting those pieces on to make sure everything is staying in place for you and that it won't come off over time. Once those are all glued in place, go ahead and take a pencil or if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can also cut out letters if you don't feel comfortable hand painting. I personally love hand painting just because I love the way it looks and it's really therapeutic for me. So I went ahead and sketched out my letters and we're going to do the word peace. Now I had a viewer say to me the other day that she's noticed that so many people are doing joy. And I wanted to do this shout out for my friend who asked me to do a peace DIY. I love the word peace. I think it's such a wonderful word to have in our home at Christmas time and all year long. I know that we all need a little more peace in our lives. So once I painted on all of my letters with my fine tip brush in white, I went ahead and moved on to the top. I took off this greenery piece from a bell and I'm gonna be using the bell for another DIY later. I tied it on with some twine and then to finish the look, I added some hot glue to put on a cute bow and it was ready to display. This DIY is super simple and there's been so many different variations of it, but I wanted to do something different because I came up with this technique at the beginning of this Christmas season. I love adding this texture to my DIYs, these little bumps. And I know they're just a little bit of bling that a lot of people use on scrapbooking, but these are so cool when you see what we're gonna do with them. So I'm just taking them and going along all the edges of my plate and then as well on my candle stem. So I'm gonna go around the middle part and then I'm gonna come down to the base and also go around the base. Now we're gonna be doing a whitewash with these and it is going to look so cool. Instead of doing the regular distressing that we do, we're gonna end up doing it with white and it's gonna look so cool. Here I am busting open a new bottle of E6000. That last one that you saw in my last video, I was just squeezing the life out of that thing, trying to make sure I got every drop. So I like to do it in three parts. I do three different areas of the E6000 and then I come back in in the opened areas and I add in the hot glue in those other three areas to make sure that it's nice and sealed. The hot glue is for a short term hold and the the E6000 is for a long term hold. Once you have that all done, take it outside and spray paint it all the color that you want. I went with red because that's the color I'm doing for our home this Christmas season. And now we're gonna start working on that white paint. So I'm just putting very little, not too crazy, because we're gonna be wiping away the majority of it. We want the white to fall in between all of those bumps and those grooves because it adds the prettiest detail. Then when you're all done with the white part, go ahead and take some of your glossy Mod Podge and go ahead and just rub that all over the whole thing and then really let it dry. Now I definitely would not put cookies on this, but you could if you put down a little cloth with it, but this could definitely be the cutest thing to put on little treats or some candles. So pretty for Christmas. For this next DIY, it is super simple. We are gonna take these golden bells that would normally not make the cut on my Christmas tree just because it's not my style, but I thought, you know what? These could be so pretty if we took them and spray painted them a more neutral looking color. So I did that, I sprayed all four of them, and then I'm gonna take some twine and I'm just gonna do a simple loop knot down at the bottom, and then I'm gonna take that extra piece here and I'm just gonna cut it off so it has a nice knot. I added a little bit of hot glue on those pieces so they don't come untied over time. And I made sure that the twine pieces were long enough because we're gonna do a loop knot up at the top. So I'm going and making sure that each bell is hanging in the right place. I'm just positioning them and pulling them down as I need to. And then once I've got all four of them to where I like them to be, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up to the top and I'm gonna just loop it around my finger, tie a knot, and then I wanted to clean it up so I actually took another piece of twine and just kind of looped it around and glued it all into place so it looks really pretty when you hang it up on your tree. Now we can leave it here or we could take it a step further, which is what I always like to do. I like to just keep playing with it until I get it to where I like it. 
I'm going to take some white paint and I'm just going to lightly, very lightly dry brush all over the bells to bring out that detail that was originally on them. This DIY is super simple. This pine cone came off of a pick from the Dollar Tree that was left over that I hadn't used yet. And with it already having the wire in it, it is perfect to turn it into an ornament. So now I know I could probably dip this pine cone into paint and be even faster, but I didn't have a container that had paint in it that was big enough. But I decided to just show you how I did it this way where I'm just putting the paint down inside the grooves and I'm taking my brush and I'm just tapping it all around until I get it completely covered. If you do have a big bucket of paint, go for it. Dip it in, it'll be even quicker, and it's just so beautiful when you turn it into a solid color. Now I'm gonna take that wire up at the top and I'm gonna just simply twist it around until it turns into a little hook loop so that we can hang it up on our tree. And then we can leave it like that, but that's just not that pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of this buffalo check ribbon and I'm gonna do a simple little loop around pulling the ribbon through and then I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom to try to hide that wire even more so it's nice and clean and polished and it looks store-bought. So now at the top we have these two pieces that are loose and I love doing this because it makes a nice clean look at the top. We're going to add on some hot glue and we're going to just bring that ribbon over and flatten it down so it's nice and clean and polished up there. And then once that's all in place go ahead and take a bow however you would like your bow to be. If you're interested in my bow video, I'll link it down below in my description box. But here is my bow that I'm gonna be putting on. I'm just gonna add some hot glue and then put that bow right on that joint where the ribbon was looped around and it's gonna conceal all of that and it's gonna look so beautiful when it's hanging up on your tree. For this craft, we're going to be using these long dowel sticks from the Dollar Tree, two stars, and two wood plaques. Now, you don't have to do two of these, but I loved how they looked where one was taller than the other, so that's why I made two. To get started, we're going to cut the twine out, patch those holes that were originally in the plaque and the stars, and then we're going to drill a hole in the center of the plaque and a hole at the bottom of the star. And you're going to want to make sure that the point is facing down. You can see that I lifted it up so I didn't drill through my desk because I do use my drill in my craft room. Once you've got those all drilled, and if you don't have a drill bit that's big enough, I don't either. I just drill around a little bit in a circle until I get the size that I need for the dowel. I like to use a wood glue and a hot glue combined for that long-term, short-term hold while it's drying. I just don't trust hot glue by itself forever, and I always like to make sure I add in some wood glue. Once that's all dry, go ahead and paint your base and your sticks or your dowels, whichever you want to call it. And keep in mind that you're going to want one dowel to be shorter than the other. So I did cut that down a little bit. I forgot to show that, but you're going to see at the end that one is taller than the other. Now you're going to decide what color you want your star to be painted. I'm going with red and white this year in my home, so I'm painting my star red. And then once everything was all painted and dried, I went ahead and took some sandpaper and just roughed up my star to give it that farmhouse distress look. I don't get too crazy with this part because I just like a little bit of distressing. I know it's not for everyone. Now for this next part, you're going to notice that the base has some text paper on it. Friends, I recorded it and for whatever reason it was out of focus. I'm so sorry, but how I did it was I took a piece of text paper from a book. I cut it down to size. I didn't make it perfectly shaped to that size, but I just cut like a nice piece of it. And then I cut a slit, shaked it and shimmied it around the little dowel. And then I just glued it all down. And once it was glued down in place, I took some sandpaper and sanded the edges until I got that shape that was perfectly the shape of the base and then just glued it all into place. So here you're seeing me add on the moss on top of it because I just really love how this looks together with the text paper on it. You don't have to do the text paper or even the grass, but I just think it looks so cute all together. Very farmhouse, very chic. I don't know. And then now what I'm going to be doing is I'm taking these greenery twist Christmas tree 
there's a name for him too. Friends, I'm so sorry. I'm the worst at names here on my channel. <laughs> but I'm going to take it and give it a haircut because last year I realized when I was working with this and trying to make a tiny wreath that they were just too bushy. So I give it a little haircut, twist it into a wreath, add a cute bow. I'm going to link my bow video down below if you're interested. And then add some berries and then they're ready to be displayed. For this DIY, we're gonna be using two oval plaques, one round wood plaque, and then these two different size craft sticks or dowels, either one you wanna call it. We're gonna start by taking out the twine that was on the three of these plaques, and we're gonna do a hole right into that plaque. Now, I did not go all the way down through because I wanted to be able to hold this stick. So we're going to go ahead and put that stick on as well as two other shorter sticks on this oval sign, glue that on. I also added in some wood glue and I'm making sure that it's straight because you don't want this to be crooked. So make sure you check it before the glue really dries. And then I'm coming back in with some more hot glue and some wood glue and I'm going to bring on that other piece. Now this is turning into the coolest farmhouse Christmas decor. Now once that putty was filled into the holes and it dried, I went ahead and sanded it to smooth it out. And now I'm taking another one of these dowels and I'm cutting it down to size so that I can use a star at the top and help support the side so it doesn't break over time. I wanted to make sure it's nice and flat up there at the top so it can support the, the points of the star. So I added on some more hot glue put on a larger and a smaller star so it has a nice layered look and at this point we can now go ahead and start to stain our wood. Now this project I've got to tell you was so much fun because I was kind of creating it and coming along as I was going making these decisions of what would be best and so here I am I'm taking a little bit of brown paint black paint and some water and I'm using it as a stain. It's a really affordable way if you don't want to go out and work with stain, which can be even more messy. This is almost like working with watercolors and it cleans up really easy. So once I have that all painted, I left that oval in the middle because we're going to be doing something really special there in just a few minutes. I'm going to take some of this buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just hide where these ovals are coming together because we don't want to see down inside there. So this really finishes the sides really nicely. When you get to the bottom of the oval, just go ahead and take your scissors and snip it off because you are gonna run into the dowel that's holding up the oval sign. Then you're gonna come around on the other side and you're gonna go as close up to that wooden dowel you can get and just clean it up. And then as well, we're gonna come around the bottom of the base. Now, once everything is dry, we're gonna go ahead and come back in with some white paint and I did two coats of this so it was really crisp and beautiful. And I just made sure there was that wood showing around the sides. I also painted the star and this, the dowel that's holding everything together and up. So I came in with a smaller brush where I needed it, a bigger brush where I needed it, and I just took my time painting all the white areas that I wanted it to have. Then once I was all done with that and the paint was dry, I came back in with a really pretty grayish blue color and I lightly dry brushed the top to look like the night sky. And then I came in with a greenish, almost like a greenish brown color. And then I did the grass with a dry brush. And then you saw that I did the sticks for the manger and the little bed for baby Jesus. And now I'm just coming in with some hay and I used some white to create his head and his little swaddling. And I'm just coming in with some lighter brown and just finishing off the hay. And you also saw that I used the fine tip brush to circle around the head and the body of baby Jesus. Then I used my handwriting and I just wrote on Merry Christmas in pencil. And then I came back in with my black paint and my small brush and I hand painted the rest of that. 
Now I wanted to sparkle up that star just a little bit, so I added some hot glue in between the stars, and I'm just adding in this really chunky, thick, vintage looking glitter. I thought this looked so pretty. Then at the bottom I added a bow and some of the Spanish moss, and it's ready to be displayed. For this DIY, we are gonna take this leftover sign that I think I got around Valentine's Day, but any sign will work that you have on hand. I'm sure you have some from the Dollar Tree. And then this free printable that I designed for you all. So go ahead by starting with painting the sign. Once you've got two coats of white paint on it, I went ahead and cut out my wings. Now, the reason why I didn't just create a printable that had music notes with wings is because I wanted you to be able to have this as a dual option where you can work with the music notes separately and then you can use the wings on another project. So that way it's versatile for other things and not just only one time use. So once I took my wings, I cut them out and then I traced them onto the music note paper. You can see them over to my side. I went ahead and did some distressing once the white paint was dried and then I'm going to come back over again to my wings and I'm going to glue them onto some burlap. I'm not going to cut them apart. I want them to be gathered together in the middle and then I'm just going to add some hot glue and put that right down on my sign. Now I wanted the sides to be bent up just a little bit so it looks like they're going to take flight any second but I just thought this was so pretty adding that extra burlap in there. Now we're gonna add on some more texture. You don't have to do this if this is not your jam, but that's okay. If it is, have fun with it. Don't be afraid to try something new. But again, you know what you like, and I would never want you to do something that you didn't feel comfortable with. So the whole thing on my channel is to always encourage you to try something new and just, you know, play with your projects and keep, keep playing with them until you get them to a point that you love. So I'm now taking a little wooden star. I painted it yellow and I'm gonna take some of this chunky, thick glitter that I just love so much. And I'm just gonna glue that right in the center of the wings. That glitter came from Michael's and I think I used a coupon. It was the best price and I love it. I use it all the time. So now I'm gonna use my cursive. And again, you can use vinyl on this, but I'm just gonna paint it. It's so much easier for me just to paint it sometimes. And then I sealed it with Mod Podge once it was dry because if you don't, these rub-on stickers will have a hard time sticking sometimes when the paint is still really dry if you don't wait 24 hours. And then I just rubbed them on and they were all set to be displayed. This DIY is super simple. I'm gonna take some of these wood plaques that I finally, finally found. Wood planks, I just said wood plaques, whichever, whatever we wanna call it. I'm gonna take one and I am going to paint it white and then I'm going to put Prince of Peace on it. I thought this would be really pretty for an ornament on a Christmas tree. You could also do this for family names. If you're a grandparent, you could also end up doing this for a really special thing that you want to remember. I just, I saw these and I thought, you know, this could be something really special to customize as an ornament to put on a Christmas tree. And once everything was all painted on, I went ahead and added some of my cute gingham ribbon or buffalo check, whichever you want to call it. And then I'm just going to glue on a bow, take my crocodile, and I love this tool because it cuts through metal and wood. And then I'm going to just pop out two holes so I can add on some twine and some wooden beads. I thought this detail was really pretty and super farmhouse chic. <laughs> and once I had everything all strung on that I wanted, I went ahead and tied a knot and it was ready to be hung up on my tree.
For this DIY, we are gonna be making an angel. I made one a couple of days ago. If you missed it, I'll link that video at the end of this video. But we're gonna use one of these signs from the Dollar Tree that's wood and one of these decor signs. Pop off the twine and the tag, and then I'm gonna keep that let it snow for another DIY and another day. We're gonna take that snowman, we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna decide how tall we want this to be. I just went at the halfway point of the sign, and now I'm gonna create this shape coming down at the sides. And I'm gonna repurpose those printable wings that I have that it's linked down below, and I'm going to just trace those on as well. Now, I love cutting these things apart because they snap really easy, they turn into whatever shape you want them to, and you're gonna see that I'm even gonna be able to do it with the wings. Now, if you have arthritis, this might be a tricky one to do, but if your hands are strong enough, this is definitely something to try because it is so cool. You can get a really strong, sturdy piece to work off of, and you can create the coolest things with these signs other than just creating the rectangle shape. So don't be afraid to cut them up and tear them up and do something cool with them because you'll be surprised what you can make with them. So once I had the body and the wings cut out, I'm now gonna take my white paint and I'm gonna give it two coats of white paint. I always like to do two coats because I feel like the first one always sucks into whatever it is you're painting and then the second one really seals that deal. So I'm gonna take one of these wood rounds and I'm going to use that for the head of my angel and I'm gonna give that a coat of paint and then on the back side, I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the wings, take one of these stacking blocks, glue it. Now I'm sure you're thinking, wait, you're putting staples on the front side of your angel, but it's okay, I promise we're gonna conceal it. No one's even gonna even know that the staples are there. So we put in six just to make sure it's nice and sturdy and the wings never break. I'm gonna add on another block for the head and do the same thing. Staple it all into place to make sure everything is nice and secure. And then down at the bottom, we're gonna put on three more of those blocks so we can actually get it to stand up. Now I saw this angel on a farmhouse decor site and they were selling it for so much. And I thought, oh no way. Friends, I'm gonna show you all how to make this just in case angels are your thing. I thought this was so pretty and I just knew right away we could make this really easy. And at this point, I've only spent a dollar, maybe a dollar and 20 cents. So now I've stapled everything all on. I stapled it to the platform or that wood plaque. And then you saw how I came in with that wood putty that you can use to fill in holes and I'm just letting it dry and then painting over it and you no longer even see those staples. And the cool thing is, is it does create a texture which is great because you could wait and sand it and make it really smooth but I actually wanted the texture because we're gonna create this really pretty ombre effect on the angel's body, the gown. And then on the wings we're gonna take some of this blue paint, create some lines just like it was on the inspiration and I'm gonna come back in with some gray I also, before I started the gray, I distressed it a little bit with the blue, and then I'm coming back in and distressing it with a little bit of the gray to create some of this depth. And then I'm gonna come back in with the white to tidy up the line, because I want the line to be nice and crisp right there. And then once I have all of that set and done, I'm then gonna move on to some more of the fun painting and distressing part. Now, this is up to your imagination and how far you wanna go, but I really, think that the inspiration was so pretty. So I'm coming in with some of this grayish brown color and I'm just having fun, just distressing it and making it look, you know, farmhouse. And then I'm gonna take one of my favorite tools which is a toothbrush when I'm painting. I love to tap it in, make sure you don't have too much, flick on some paint, and then I'm gonna add on some of these little white dots just like it was in the inspiration. I'm gonna link the inspiration down below so you all can see what it was that I'm, what I'm doing here. And then I'm just gonna tidy up the base, add on some of these little stars. I'm taking three of them, and I'm just going to first put down a piece of twine right in the middle, folded it in half, add it on a blue star. I'm gonna take the twine and bring it around the back now on the inspiration, they were like these Jimmy looking stars, but I didn't have that. And then I added on some twine down the center and three more stars.
Our next DIY has such simple steps and it is just such an impact sitting on a table. It could be so cute. You could also put these together and use them as stocking hangers if you put hooks on the bottom of them. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this wood block that you can get in the craft section from the Dollar Tree and we're going to drill out three holes. Now you can see here that my drill bit is too small so I'm just kind of going around until I make it a little bit bigger the size that I need. And then I'm going to take these Christmas tree ornaments. I love these. I think these are so pretty from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put three of them on here and glue them down into place. Now, here's a crafter's warning. I wish that I had thought to paint the block first before I glued the trees in, but I got so excited and got ahead of myself and glued them in because I thought they looked so cute that then I had to make the commitment to try to paint around the trees. So obviously paint the wood block first <laughs> and save yourself the step of having to struggle with painting around the trees. But here I am, I'm just adding in a brown color because I thought it would be really pretty to make this look like a really pretty, almost like a mahogany dark wood. And I'm going back in with a brownish black to just kind of add a little bit more depth and texture to it so it's not just a regular brown color. I like to dry brush on different tints of brown because it really does bring it to life. It makes it look like real wood. Once that was dry, I went in with some white paint around the trees to make it look like snow had fallen right underneath those trees. And then I touched up obviously any spots where I accidentally bumped my tree as well <laughs> because well, I was a little impatient and wanted to glue those trees in, I guess. Sometimes we do that as crafters. I think we get so excited that we don't think things through when we're doing our steps. But here I am, I'm just adding in some white paint, just kind of sporadically across the top of it. And then I'm gonna go back in with some glitter and I'm gonna put that all over it to stick to the paint so it shimmers just like the Christmas ornaments do. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to sit up on a table, especially by a window if it catches the light and it shines some. I just think that this part is so cute. So once you've got your glitter added, go ahead and add some glitter as well to the very top of the little holes with some hot glue and you'll seal up those holes perfectly and you won't even notice that they used to be an ornament. DIY. I'm going to be taking a large ornament from the Dollar Tree and some canvas type fabric and then I'm going to be using my rotary blade and I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of strips. Now once I've got those all cut out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take two pieces of that and I'm going to hot glue that down at the bottom because we don't want to see the very bottom of the ornament and you're going to see why in just a second. So once I've glued those pieces on, I'm now going to take a line of hot glue, a bead of hot glue. Well, I would say a line, not a bead because that would be like a little dot. Maybe. I don't know. What would be the right word for that? <laughs> Leave it down below friends. You're always so good to me by helping correct anything I say weird here on my channel. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm going to do that line of hot glue and then you can see as I'm scrunching it along the hot glue to create a pleated effect. Then I wanted to make sure that the bottom looks nice and finished and polished. So I'm going to go underneath it and just put a little bit of hot glue around that circle. And then I'm going to take my popsicle stick or whatever you have just to press it down into place. Then we're gonna keep working our way up the side of the ornament. We are gonna to continue to do that line of hot glue and then we're gonna pleat on the next row and you're just gonna keep doing this over and over until we get all the way up to the very top. Now I've learned that you didn't have to go pulling it back and forth, back and forth. You just do the line of glue and just kind of keep scrunching it and pushing it over and sliding it through the hot glue and it'll allow it to just stick beautifully to the ornament and it has a nice pleated effect naturally without having to sit there pleating it back and forth. Then when you get to the top and you're on the last one, you're gonna come all the way up to the top of the ornament and you're just gonna to continue to do the same thing working in that tighter quarters. And then to really finish off the look, I went ahead and took a rope from the Dollar Tree, untwisted it, because there's three inside of that thick rope, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just coil that and wrap that all around the whole top of the ornament. This ornament is so high-end boutique looking for that farmhouse look. It's incredible how much they charge for these, and this truly was like 
$1.50 to make. Could you imagine a whole bunch of these? Oh, they could be so beautiful for Christmas. Then simply add your little twist knot up at the top to hang it up. For this project, we are going to need four long painter sticks, a bunch of clothespins, and a cute star to put on top of our Christmas tree. Now, we are going to take two painter sticks and we are going to measure out the length we need at the top. And we're going to be starting up at the top where that groove is where you could put your hand to hold the painter stick and we're going to use our miter box and we are going to cut out four different sizes they're going to start getting longer as they go and then we're going to take some hot glue and some wood glue for that long-term short-term hold and then we're going to just put that right on and glue all of them down into place. Now I wanted to make sure mine didn't fall apart so I went ahead and used my staple gun and then I'm also going to add my star at the top. At this point it has started to look like a little Christmas tree and we're going to need something to put it in. So we're going to take one of these boxes from the Dollar Tree that normally has a drawer in it. I took the drawer out because I wanted to put some florals and picks inside of it. So you can see here that I've pushed down into the foam. Now I'm going to add some glue, slide that back inside, and then to make sure that it has a nice good firm hold in there, I'm going to also use my staple gun on the back side of the box. These are all going to be covered up with paint in a little bit, which is you're seeing me here using my green and then on the bottom of the box, I didn't show me painting that, but I painted that one white. But you can honestly paint this whatever you want. If you're going for a more modern farmhouse look, you can paint it black and you can paint it any other colors that you might like for your holiday season. Now I'm going to take two strips of ribbon and I'm going to create the easiest bow ever without fussing with tying it and you're just going to bring in the ends and create a really cute bow. I like to call this my faux bow because <laughs> it's just so fast. And then I add a little button in the middle to conceal that it's not actually tied. Now I'm going to use some picks from the Dollar Tree, put that inside, and then add on some of those clothespins so that you can put your cards on for the Christmas season. Friends, when I saw these wood boxes come out, the first thing I thought was advent calendar. And this was back at the beginning of this year, 2020, which has not been very nice to us. 2020 can go away now. I'm ready for it to leave. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you're ready for 2020 to leave as well. Just like me and my family, we are just ready to say goodbye to it. <laughs> anyway, when I saw these boxes come out, I just was so excited because I thought they would be so cute stacked up into a house to create an advent calendar. Now a little bit about Heidi is that I'm kind of obsessed with advent calendars. I love them in any form. I can get them a cheese one from Aldi's, a chocolate one from Trader Joe's, you know, just a, a Christmas one filled with scriptures. I love them all. So what I did was I made sure all of the boxes were all aligned by, I kept checking the back and the sides and you're going to want to play with them first before you actually start gluing them all together. That is the trick because they do come in different sizes. Once they're all glued, I'm going to take these three signs that I had left over from the fall season, but they do have some long ones like this right now for Christmas out. And I'm going to just basically put my house on top and I'm going to trace out the roof. Now you can see that I use some painter sticks because that's what we're going to be putting on for the roof line. And I'm going to then take my craft knife, I'm scoring it, snapping it, and cutting off any messy edges. It is pretty cool being able to use these boards because they do snap really easy and you can use them for great support or to build really cool crafts with them. I love breaking them apart into my own style and my own plans. So what we're going to do is on the back side, we are going to glue these three pieces for the house. This is going to help support the roof. You're going to see it all come together here in just a few more minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put these three pieces on 
on making sure the roof line lines up right with the bottom of the house so that there's not any issues when we go to stand it up. And then we're going to take our staple gun and we are going to ever so carefully <laughs> come right onto the edge of those boxes. There's enough of a thick lip on those boxes that you can staple through them without it coming out on both sides. On your staple guns, there should always be a little line marker showing right where the staples shoot out. And that's what I'm doing is I keep checking to make sure that that's lined up on the right spot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my painter sticks and I've got to cut them down because they're obviously too long. Now while I'm cutting those down, you're gonna see that I butted one side up to the next up at the top. So the top and the side are brought together. I didn't miter these edges, I'm just simply bringing them together because we're gonna staple those at the top in just a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those down and you're gonna need two of them for each side of the roof because we need the roof to be as thick as the boxes. So you're gonna see that there's two that are the same and two that are the same and two of them are longer than the other because that's where the seam comes together for the rooftop. Now we need to bring these pieces together because right now they're just painter sticks that are separate. So I'm gonna use these thick tongue depressor sticks and I'm gonna put those with some hot glue right on the center so that it can strengthen it and bring them together as one unit. Then at this point, we can go ahead and bring them together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue and wood glue and you can see just how I brought it on the side and the top together so that we, we don't have to worry about mitering the edges and it's stronger like this because now it'll be a big enough area to be able to staple through. So once you've got it stapled through, and by the way, ignore that my camera was all tilted, twisted. I don't know what happened here, but you can see my 1970s floor. There it is in my basement. Now, because I made this silly mistake, I wish I had actually had the scarecrows facing back because then I could have just painted the side that's raw white, but oh well, I didn't do that. So if you make the mistake, no worry, just like I did, cover it up with some scrapbook paper and then you can add on your roof. Now the reason why I'm saying you could face those scarecrows back because in just a second, you're gonna see me cover it with a really cute fabric and it really finishes off the look nicely on the backside. So once you've got your glue on for your roof and everything is nice and pressed down and in place, you then can go ahead and flip it over and staple that together as well. Remember, take your time on that and get your staples as straight as you can. If it goes through, no worries, you can always pull them out with some of your pliers that you have on hand. Now I painted all of the box, the base of the house white, and I'm painting the rooftop black because I'm going for a really pretty Magnolia home advent calendar look without paying their super expensive prices. Now I'm sure you're thinking, wait Heidi, you spent $25 on all of these boxes. Yes, that's true. But let me say this, <laughs> I ended up pulling the boxes out because the drawers, I pulled those out because I'm gonna be doing something else with those. So really, if you cut that price in half, I can end up doing two advent calendar type projects with these boxes from the Dollar Tree. It's actually like a two for one thing when you take them apart. So here I am on the back side. You saw me put the house down on the fabric. I traced around it with a pencil and now I'm cutting it out. And can I say thank you to one of my subscribers who sent me this really cute tool. Y'all know that I always burn my hands and my fingers. I actually have really tough hands from working at restaurants a ton when I was a teenager. I was really good at being a waitress and a hostess and <laughs> I don't know. So I used to carry a lot of hot plates, but every once in a while the hot glue gets me and, and boy, oh boy, does it hurt when it actually does. So I'm just using that tool to help with the hot glue. So thank you so much for friends who care and send me things in the mail. That means so much to me. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, I added on my little letter stickers, and then I'm going over with some Mod Podge to make sure they stay on there. And now inside the house to clean up my lines a little bit, I'm gonna use some of this lace ribbon. I thought this would be pretty and finish the look.
Now for this DIY, I'm going to be using this wire that I had on hand, but I ran out of the wire from the Dollar Tree, but just know that they have wire there as well, and you could definitely use the wire from the Dollar Tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice long piece, and I'm going to use a small paint bottle, or my Mod Podge bottle from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go around it three times, and then I'm going to take the end and twist it so that those three rings stay together. Once I have done that, and they're all nice and secure, I'm then going to work on the bottom part. And this is all gonna to stay together with the top and the bottom with one long piece of wire. So then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna to start to form a triangle. And I'm going to create this triangle three times. You could do four if you wanna make it even stronger. And I think I end up doing four. I'll see here in a second. But I'm gonna basically recreate this again and again and again. And I'm gonna just keep looping the wire through so it kind of tangles into it as I'm doing each new layer. You can see here that I came up through the head and I'm just going to bring that down. And then once I've gotten all the way around, yes, I actually did four. So I did four around the bottom of this cute little angel we're making out of wire. I just wanted you all to see that you don't have to spend a ton of money to make really beautiful DIYs. So once you had the body figured out, we're gonna take another piece of wire and we are gonna twist it into a figure eight or an infinity loop. So we're gonna go up one side, come through the middle and then loop around and we're gonna do that four times as well. And don't worry about them being perfectly the exact same length. You actually kinda want them to be just a little bit wonky. It looks so cute when the wire's all stretched out and the wing looks like it's flared open. Once you've got your wing all done, you're then going to twist that onto the neck with the remaining wire that you had from it. And then I took some pliers, I don't think I showed it here, but I took some pliers and I just kind of crunched everything down into the middle to really tighten and fasten it. And then once I had everything nice and snug, I decided to come back in with one more piece of wire really to just clean it up and to make it look so much better. And I went around it several times to really build up the wire right in the middle. Then once I had that where I liked it, I went ahead and I twisted it as tight as I could, twisting, twisting, twisting. And then I'm gonna come in with my wire cutters and cut off that piece and then take the other ones and just press everything down into place again. Then up at the top, I took some twine, looped it through, tied a knot up at the top, added a simple bow, and this is just the sweetest DIY that cost pennies to make. For this DIY, we're gonna be using three of these wood rounds, and this is kind of a three for one on this project. You honestly could make as many of these as you want. I picked up this box of wood rounds from Artesia. I'm gonna link it down below in my description box if you're looking for some of these. But what I did was I started with painting white circles in the middle of each one, and then once they were dry, I went ahead and came in with my pencil, and I just sketched on three different words as well as a little green vine on each of them. I like to do this first with my pencil instead of just going at it with paint because it is so easy to make a mistake and then have to start over. It's so frustrating. So I always like to go in with my pencil first. I always keep one in my craft room for measuring or whatever or handwriting. And then I'm just now going to come in with my black paint and I'm going to take my time. This is obviously sped up for TV but I like to take my time when I'm painting these. And then I'm gonna come back in with my green and simply paint on a vine, and I've got a beautiful set of three ornaments. And to finish it off, I added some twine and a cute bow up at the top to hang up on my tree. For this DIY, it's super simple. We're gonna take this piece of wood, some bells, and some fabric, and I'm gonna start by painting the wood white. This is gonna become a cute little house home decor piece. I'm gonna then take a strip of that fabric, cut it down to the size that I want, and then on the ends, I'm gonna create a little dovetail, and I'm gonna glue them down into place because I just like when they're glued down very lightly so that they don't flip and get kind of wonky over time. 
Then I'm going to take one of the bells, lace it onto a piece of twine, bring that underneath the knot, and then simply tie it right in the center of that knot. This is the cutest, cutest thing to give to a loved one. If you have a little goodie treat basket that you're taking someone and you just want to give them something for Christmas, these are so easy to make if you like doing a little homemade gift to give people. And then I just put this little twine bow in the middle of it. And for a great substitute, if you don't have a Cricut or a Silhouette, a cutting machine, these rub-ons from the Dollar Tree are so fantastic. You just simply cut out the letters that you need, peel off the little white paper on the back, rub them down, lift up the little clear piece of plastic on the front, and then you have the cutest little custom sign. So easy to make, so quick, and what a great way to make a home decor piece. And then I just sanded the sides just a little bit to add some texture and some depth. For this DIY, we are gonna be using a really chunky, thick yarn in white and red, and we're also gonna be using an ornament from the Dollar Tree. Now, a trick I like to do is I always like to put my yarn inside of some type of a box <laughs> that has a hole, so that way it doesn't roll off the table and pick up any dust or whatever might be around my craft space. So I'm just gonna thread that through the hole of this Dollar Tree box, and then I can get started on my craft. Start by taking the two ends of the yarn, and you're gonna go Go ahead and just put them right in the center the bottom of the ornament then you're going to start adding some hot glue and coiling it around once you've got that started you're going to go ahead and just take your hot glue and i like to kind of go in a zigzag back and forth with my hot glue to make sure that i'm covering all of my surface that i will need for the yarn to really catch and stick to the ornament then as i'm going back and forth back and forth I'm making sure I'm pulling the yarn around nice and snug so that way it doesn't want to come unravel over time. And make sure when you're doing it, try your very best not to tap the hot glue, obviously because it will burn you, but also because when that hot glue gets on your hand, it wants to naturally pull up that yarn. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're being as cautious as you can with this one but it is so fun and how cool could this be? You could do this with any color. You can do it with even more than two. I really loved how this turned out as I was coiling around more and more and more. I thought this could be so cool if I made a whole bunch of these and had this for whatever my color theme is because I'm always changing things out throughout my home always for Christmas and all the seasons. So here I am towards the end. I'm bringing it up nice and tight to the lid or the little cap and then I'm gonna add some hot glue and then this is the trick. I like to take my hot glue and I just like to press that right down on there to smooth it out with the hot glue. And then to conceal that last little part of the hot glue, I added a bow. And now this is my tip whenever I'm doing ornaments. I like to thread through a piece of twine. I'm gonna go back so you can see it again. I fold it in half, I slip down that knot or that little loop that we have and this is going to allow your ornament to stay out from it turning or going to the side and it not being centered towards the front then i'm simply going to tie a knot up at the top and then i'm going to cut it off and then add a little bit of hot glue to seal it and tie it all together so that way it doesn't come unraveled over time and then you have a nice clean look at the very top of your ornament and once you're all done and everything's all dry, you're ready to hang it up on your Christmas tree. For this next ornament, we're gonna be using a large ornament, again, from the Dollar Tree and some of their red and white gingham ribbon. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off the cap because we're gonna be putting some paint on the inside this is a trick that has been around for a long time, but we're gonna do something special with this. So we're gonna just take that white paint, we're gonna shake it around in there until we get all the sides cover, and then just make sure you drain out the excess paint. You don't wanna have a lot of paint in there because that's gonna cause it to have an issue later, and it will take forever to dry. So once you tap it a few times and you just let it sit there, the majority of the paint is gonna naturally want to drain out. Once all the paint has drained out and it's dried, go ahead and start by wrapping a ribbon around. I'm gonna be using this red and white gingham ribbon that I got so lucky when I found this at the Dollar Tree in their floral section. 
I couldn't believe it. They had it in all different colors and I snagged a whole bunch because I just love this and I use this ribbon all the time. So once I wrapped it around, I'm now going to add on a little bow to the front. For this DIY, we're going to be taking a can lid, an actual glass jar lid that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I took it outside and I spray painted it black and now I'm going to use some scrapbook paper from this pad of paper. I'll link it down below, but I liked this one in particular because I felt like this damask looked like it had a little Christmas tree on it. So I went ahead and traced a circle with that center piece on the lid and now I'm going to just cut it out. I'm gonna glue it on with some hot glue and then I'm gonna pop that right into the metal ring. I'm adding in some hot glue on the four corners of this round lid and now I'm gonna just pop that in there so it stays in there nice and snug. Once that's nice and dry and ready to go, I'm gonna take my crop -a dial This is one of my favorite tools. I'll link it down below. In fact, I'll link all my tools down below. But this particular tool is the coolest because it goes through metal and wood and plastic, anything you can think of, it will most likely go through leather. <laughs> so you can see that I ended up popping out two holes there and I'm putting on a piece of twine. I tied a knot, brought it back inside of the can because I wanted to make sure it had a nice clean look. And now I'm gonna bring through a piece of wire going the opposite direction down into the can. And this is so that I can wire on this little greenery. Now you don't have to do this, but I felt like the lip was not very thick on the rim or the ring of this you know, lid. I wanted to make sure it stayed on there. So I'm just gonna use this to just twist on, snip off the extra, and that way it really stays on there really well. And it's made with, you know, quality versus just kind of gluing it on. I don't really trust glue that much. And then I'm gonna add on some berries and a little bow. And at this point, it's ready to be hung up and displayed. For this ornament, I'm going to be using some E6000 and some glitter and the small ornaments that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Now, this glue is on its last leg. That's typically how I am with my supplies. I like to squeeze every little bit out and get my money's worth. So we're going to take this and smooth it on like you would smooth frosting on a cake. And we're not going to go all the way over the whole ball. We're going to do it at the bottom and the top so that the middle part remains clear. Once you've got it on the bottom, go ahead and tap that in the glitter. The E6000 is going to make it bond to the ornament without it flaking off and going everywhere. Do not use hot glue because it'll just peel right off over time and the E6000 really does lock in. Then go ahead and add on some more glitter towards the top and you can see here in the middle that I've left it clear. This makes it look like frost is just coming all over the ornament which is so cool. Now. Once it's all dry, go ahead and take the ribbon of your desire and you're gonna go ahead and just go through the hole. I folded my ribbon in half, I went through the hole, pulled that loop down, and then up at the top, I wanna finish and make the look of it look really high quality and just, you know, finish properly. Then I took some hot glue and I just folded over those two ends together so that there's not a knot at the top. And then now I'm going to add on a little bow to really just dress it up and make it look so festive for your Christmas tree. I am so excited to share this DIY because these trees are so expensive at boutiques and we all are loving that woodland farmhouse look right now for Christmas. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these plaques, you are going to cut away the twine and this is all from the Dollar Tree except for the stair spindle which I'll explain that in a second. But we're going to fill that hole, then we're going to create a counter sink hole. That means don't go all the way through. This is so that the screw that you're going to use can sink down in there. Then you're going to switch to a thinner drill head or drill bit and you're going to drill through and then also pre-drill a hole at the bottom of your spindle that came off of an old staircase. Now I 
love these long spindles like this from these old staircases. I actually picked mine up from Habitat for Humanity. I always pick them up there because they are so affordable. I picked this one up for a dollar. So once you've got that all screwed together at the base, I'm then going to come back up to the top part of it and I'm going to drill out a hole that is going to be large enough for me to be able to put the tree rod that comes from the Dollar Tree down inside there. We want to make sure that it fits. So make sure when you drill in there, you've got a big enough piece that's going to be able to allow it to go down in there and stick. Now we're going to take these Dollar Tree trees and I figured this out last year when you flatten a side and bring them together it makes these trees twice as thick which is so great so we're going to take three of these trees we're going to flatten two of them so that they can come together and then we are going to take this third tree and we're going to just point all of the bristles down so it looks like an evergreen and we're going to bring them together to make it even taller and longer by the time we're all done, this thing is going to be over four feet tall and you can make these in all different heights and they seriously, the whole thing, I'm trying to think, the base was a dollar, the spindle was a dollar, and then the three trees. So I mean, we're making this thing for five dollars and boutiques and even at like Hobby Lobby and Target, all these places that are selling these trees, they are selling them for so much. So you can see here, I'm just zip tying them all together to get the height and you can continue to add on it even taller, get different size spindles that you want, zip tie them all together. Once they're nice and strong and secure, you can even add a little bit of hot glue in there to make them even stronger. Then you're going to take some of those garland ties, these greenery garland ties from the Dollar Tree, and you're going to go in and conceal where you put those zip ties because that will be something that people will notice when they look at them. Now I'm going to add some E6000 to the metal rod on one of the sides and then I put a whole bunch of hot glue down inside of the spindle and I'm just going to sneak that all in there and make sure it's nice and snug and tight and then let it really dry. Add in a couple more of those greenery pieces and then come down to the bottom. I wanted to make sure that the white all matched, but I also wanted to still have that distressed look. So you're gonna see me going in with some brown paint, some sanding, just to make it look more farmhouse, like it's been around for a while, and you know, what they look like in the stores. Then add a really beautiful bow, and you're ready to put a whole bunch of these together by your fireplace. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of this video. And until the next episode, bye friends.